Show coming on, you like? I don't like that bullshit. He already started. I don't know why the hell you telling me. Dennis Berlin. That show, mama, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Mama, that go that man, he just talk a lot of shit. He could be up late at night, tuning into all his hits. See my grandmama, I hate him, and my mama, and my titty getting mad. Posting comments like we watching real TV. Mama, that go that man, yelling from that oh, nigga, what? He's successful attorney on the two, be turning up. We be turning up, turning up, we turning up, yeah. We be turning up, yeah, yeah, we turning up. It's that real spit, like some barbershop talk. Except it's real black men that be walking for me. Oh, oh. Intelligent, what verse? Sometimes we might curse what we cuss a lot. Just like these lovely ladies fuss a lot. Switch it up, tell these Indies, Lucas gotta pick it up. Move along, me and you ain't brothers, not the womb on my own. Cross examination on in the, in the chat room. All the trolls with the disrespect, we in the back room. Huffing and you sucking up the air like a vacuum. Daddy disappeared, told your baby I'll be back. Soon. I just represent us cause the system can't afford it I'm your homie, I'm your brother, sometimes a court appointed Anointed, know you hate it, but I give you fair chosen Just like Jesus in the house of God Kicking chairs over, suit and tie soldier Get the cold shoulder, the hate and you talking Not a fucking stain on me Watch your dame homie, I got that change on me Black rich, I don't give a shit, bet your dame want me Mama that go that man, he just talk a lot of shit He be up late at night, tuning in to all his hits See my grandma my hate him That's my mother business You ain't got a goddamn thing to do with it Me and my mama and my titty getting mad Posting comments like we watching real TV Mama that go that man He talk a lot of shit She be up late at night Tuning in to all his hits See my grandma my hate him And my mama and my titty getting mad Posting comments like we watching real TV Mama that go that man Family that's amongst you. Got a slut ass auntie and a cool ass uncle. Kinda won't front you, but let you ride the whip around the block like a stunt. Don't do a lot of bumping. When your mama call, when an X man jumping. All you see is feet and an X man stomp. That's my uncle D. That's why the Blizzard King coming. Hot girl winter, oh, Blizzard King summer. My we's a coming. No singing and no humming. Told me we shall overcome it. Got him leaking. I'm the plumber. My nigga made Zoom look cool. Yeah, you funny. What else, Uncle D? Gotta prove more money. Overlook the tunes. If you gotta shun him. Brotherhood over any woman. Cause if she play her role, then she fam. And she good. When we say brother, my sister, we mean the hood. Now, homie, pop the trunk. It's been reeking just like a skunk. We can swim your knowledge and ditch it just how you want. He just run his mouth and that bullshit be the bomb. In a sunken place, he's thinking that drunk. He don't even drink and I tell you that drunk. My nephew told me I wanna be just like my own. He don't even drink and I tell you that drunk. My nephew told me I wanna be just like my own. Brand good, suit and tie, lawyer, reppin' manhood. He don't tap dance, he overstand, he playin' good. Titles don't get it, most of us gettin' ambush. Mayonnaise, clam bush, buck broken, man touch. Woke up in the morning, got walk, that's on my mind. Peace can only come when your lawyer know the divine. Hey, I stay entwined, you keep a criminal mind. How you think I shine and stay from falling behind? He got open eyes and can't see it, he blind. You nice all the time, they tell you water is wine. Slaughter all your sons and leave your daughters behind. All she wanna do is flash that big behind. The music is the garbage they use to take you down. You used to rap intelligent, now you rapping like clowns. My prerogative, you thinking like Bobby Brown. Rest in peace to Whitney, Christina, that's underground. Wake up years later, you been the f around. Water up to your neck and watching him as you drown. How you throw a touchdown again and you out of bounds? All the black men getting passports out of town. Homie pop the trunk, it's been reeking just like a song. 
We get some good knowledge, and this is just how you want. He just run his mouth and that shit we did bump. In the sunk in place, he singing that the song. He don't even drink and I tell you that the trunk. My nephew told me I wanna be just like my uncle. He know we've been drinking, I tell you that good drunk. Let me told me I wanna be just like my uncle. Uh, uh, my uncle D, 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 favorite uncle, uncle D, my uncle D, my uncle D, my uncle D, favorite uncle, my uncle D, my uncle D, my favorite uncle, Blizzard King, Uncle D. My favorite uncle, what? Uncle D. My favorite uncle, my uncle D. My uncle D. Yeah, uncle D. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the broadcast. Shout out to all my guys who are hanging out here with me, man. Big shout out to Nev, ne Nevik, 1968 new member, and my man, Urban Eagle. Big shout out to you, man. Look, 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 look. You folks, you brothers who have uh, received paperwork from me related to this lawsuit that's being filed against our favorite uh, um, social media platform, Make sure you send that stuff back as soon as you can. Uh, I would like to file a lawsuit within this uh, lawsuit, this first of many lawsuits within the next few weeks. You guys know who you are. The petition is ready to go, at least the first one. And so I need you guys to go ahead and do that for me, baby, so we can go ahead and regulate. <laughs> oh, man. Big shout out to Mark, the freelancer. Thank you so much. Y'all know who I'm talking to. I ain't about to drop no names. You all know who you're talking to. Big shout out to my man, Mr. 43TX, J Row 49, Urban Eagle, David Dice. Thank you so much, man. Big shout out to Bass Life. Man, y'all like that music? Did y'all like that surprise music that we had planned for you all today? Did you like that around 12 o'clock? The whole, uh, uh, the whole, all the music that uh, uh, Bass Life is a uh, big bass life has put together for me. I, I strung it together and put it all up there for everybody, man. So uh, y'all make sure y'all check that out. And, and and don't don't look. I gotta pay this brother for these videos, man. So when you see the videos playing, make sure you pay. Help me out, man. I don't want to spend all my money making videos, but I just thought it would be a good change up. I mean, we're here to be educated and to be entertained. And when you have such a talented person like Big Bass Life. Uh, you, you might as well, man, you know, showcase his work, man. So uh, somebody said, don't play list. It really is. I mean, I talked to the brother and I said, look, man, you can, you know, I, I, I you know, we'll see what we can do with it. You know, uh, I really enjoy your work. It's just brilliant, brilliant work. And uh, he's just a cool cat, just a real cool dude, man. And it just, he's been around, he's done this uh, well seasoned brother. And it's just real cool, man. I like that. Nevertheless, welcome to the broadcast, everybody. Thank you for coming in. And uh, the subject for tonight, hallelujah, somebody typed hallelujah in the chat room, the subject for tonight, you understand me? What we're going to delve in, okay? We're going to delve into the topic that's uh, not just another headline, okay? It's a complex web of legal political and ethical questions that's capturing the national attention. And we're gonna unpack the ongoing saga surrounding Fulton County District Attorney Fane Willis of Inglewood, California, 
And what potential in this high profile RICO case that she has against former President Donald Trump and his 18 associates. You understand? Now, this isn't just any legal battle. This is a case. This case has layers, right? And they go beyond the courtroom into the realm of political maneuvering and alleged personal misconduct. We're talking about accusations of using the legal system for political gain. Hmm. Have we ever heard that before in the black community? I think so. I think so. I think so. Of course we have. More important, there's some explosive allegations. Let me, let me, let me pull this up real quick. There's some explosive allegations that uh, about her personal relationship between uh, Miss Willis and 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 this this special prosecutor Nathan Wade. Now this relationship is uh, is not just a private matter. It's alleged to have a significant uh, professional implications. You see. It's not like they were just sneaking in the hotel in, you know, Holiday Inn. They work together, you see? And it raises questions on his face about conflicts of interest, integrity, and integrity of the legal process. But that's not all, because it's gotten worse. There's also the claims of misused public funds, these lavish trips funded by the taxpayers' money, and much more. And these allegations have led to multiple investigations from local to federal levels and even impeachment proceedings in the Georgia State Assembly. So as we step into this discussion, remember, this isn't about taking sides, <laughs> okay? It's about understanding the complexities of the situation and the implications for the legal system and how political and personal decisions can intertwine in ways that raise serious questions. So let's dive in and break this thing down. Now, the first thing you got to understand is I told you so. Didn't I tell you so? Huh? Didn't I tell you so? I told you so. I told you this two years ago. I pointed this out. Was it two years ago or back in 20, but late 2022? I'm not sure when, but I pointed it out. Now, I, and I, what I said was that you got all of these African-American district attorneys, Alvin Bragg, Letitia James, you got the, uh, and Fane Willis prosecuting Donald Trump and his cohorts for different reasons around the country. And the charges look trumped up to me. And it looks to me like it's some sort of conspiracy. It looks to me like these black folks are being used as attack dogs and fall guys if it goes bad. And that's what you see happening. Now, as the 2024 election season progresses, attention is shifted from the typical campaign activities to these complex legal situations of, uh, 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 that 45 has got himself into. In Georgia, Trump and 18 of his associates face significant felony RICO charges with the Fulton County District Attorney, Fane Willis, at the forefront of these particular proceedings. Now, Willis herself is now facing challenges. So my question is, how are you going to do your job? <laughs> okay? How are you going to go forward with somebody that's tearing up your back? That's what I want to know. And so with all of this that she's dealing with, this woman still has not resigned. That's what I need y'all to understand. The local Georgia community, especially those near Fulton County, are conducting inquiries into her conduct. And this development has quickly gained traction and now under the scrutiny of the Georgia State Senate. They're investigating allegations of inappropriate relationship between her and her baby boo, her labu. Somebody type labu in the chat room. And her labu, Nathan Wade. The state representative, and the man's name is Chris Byrd, has introduced a resolution to impeach Willis, citing the need for legislative action against what she deems as corruption. What does that mean? That means they're going to try to raise her own up out of there. That's what that means. So you got 
ethic. We ain't got, I ain't even got to that point yet, but we got ethics violations. Okay, you being investigated by Congress. All right, and, and they're trying to remove me, and they have a predominantly Republican Congress, so it might just pass. You understand me? You see? Now, on a fa on his face, they're saying people like Mike Collins, who's a congressman, is expressing concerns about these developments, and he suggests that evidence from Wade's divorce. Uh, evidence from LeBou's divorce proceedings might indicate financial improprieties between Wade and Willis. And this situation raises questions about Willis's ability to effectively continue her role as DA while facing impeachment. You under impeachment, you trying to prosecute the president? You got ethical complaints and they trying to remove you and you trying to prosecute the president, former president in 18 is, is the biggest case of your life. There are some broader implications, and Collins points that out. Willis and Way, as far as Willis and Way's actions, and, and the congressman is saying that the potential ethical issues, and he also hints at a possible collusion involving the Trump case. Somebody type collusion in the chat room. All my good spellers out there, somebody type collusion in the chat room. Somebody type collusion in the chat room. Somebody type conspiracy in the chat room. Conspiracy, collusion, somebody type Rico in the chat room. Not Suave Rico, but R-I-C-O. Okay? Now what's going on right now is efforts are underway to obtain documents, including White House logs through the Freedom of Information Act requests. Here's what you need to understand. When you go to the White House, you got to sign in, you got to sign out. Now, I'm sure there's been some cases of some strippers sneaking in and some, I know John F. Kennedy used to streak, uh, seek to uh, sneak, to, sneak to the ladies of the night in through the kitchen. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But for the most part, everybody has to sign in when they show up. So there will be a record of people like Leticia James, and Mr. Wade and Miss Willis come into the White House to collude. And the whole point of this is they want to reveal the extent of the alleged collusion and its impact on the integrity of the legal proceedings against Trump. Basically, what they're saying is all this is just a big scam. Yeah, yeah, we've had shady presidents before, but none of them have ever been sued after they got out of office. None of them ever, nobody ever tried to put any of them in jail after they got out of office. And in fact, it's not just one lawsuit. You got three criminal cases pending against this man. Four, actually, if you count the one down in Florida, plus a couple of uh, doggone civil trials. And whether you like Donald Trump or not, this sets up a precedent that presidents can be uh, criminalized and prosecuted after they get out of office. Now, the thing is, you got to understand is this, some are saying this situation is, it, it, look, to me, it's obvious that this is, this is political. It's, 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 it's not just a partisan issue. It represents a serious ethical concern. You see? The unfolding events down in Fulton County, coupled with the national attention that Miss Willis Garner underscore the unpredictable nature of legal and political dynamics. And this highly charged election season, the last thing we need is for our new president to be determined by some sort of political court. Now, the Georgia, are y'all with me? Because I'm trying to educate. I'm trying to be entertaining, but I really want y'all to understand this because I've talked about this and I'm gonna ride this horse all the way back into the stable. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I'm going to teach y'all a lesson. First of all, I want you to understand this little black girl from Inglewood who grew up and decided to be a lawyer and moved to Georgia. Where are my people from Georgia at? If you're from Georgia, hit the G button. If you're from Georgia, hit the G button. All my Georgia folk. you from Georgia, hit the G button. This little black girl from Inglewood decided she was going to go and go to school in Georgia and become a lawyer. And she became the lawyer that she wanted to be. 
And uh, but she got a little she forgot where she was at. Georgia is still the same old Georgia that has always been since they were making those blues songs about Georgia. OK, and what what they saw was you basically indicted 18 or 19 of the most powerful political figures in Georgia. And you did that. And, and your house wasn't clean. You understand what what I'm saying? You did that, and you were sitting on shaky ground. And so guess what? All you did was make a bunch of enemies. And on top of that, you're black. On top of that, look, I tell people all the time, racism always matters. We're never going to not have racism in this country or in this world. It's always going to be there. there are, whether it's tribalism or racism, there's always going to be differences. Uh, uh, people going to see differences in each other. And some are going to think, hey, we need to unite against the other. That's the nature of humanity. It is always going to be like that. And when you're in a situation, when you're living in a state like Georgia, with its history, no different than Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, most, te- most parts of Texas, Arkansas, South Carolina, North Carolina, you have to understand where you are. You have to understand the situation you're in. Somebody types situational awareness. You decided to jump out there to be an attack dog for the Democrat Party, and I don't hear none of them standing up speaking up for you. Now what's going on is the Georgia State Assembly is currently addressing a significant legal matter involving the Fulton County District Attorney, Fonnie Wilson. State Representative Mr. Byrd, a Republican, oh, how about that? in the Deep South has introduced House Bill Resolution or House Resolution 872 proposing the impeachment of Willis. You know what happens when you get impeached? That means you get forcibly removed from your job. Now, now once if she is forcefully removed from her job, that means the Fulton County District Attorney, whoever is in there, they're all going to be conflicted out. They're going to have to send that case to somewhere else. And I would assume the Republican governor but would be the one who determined where it goes. And it's probably going to go to the reddest, most Republican Trump supporting county in Georgia. And they're just going to drop the case. You understand what I'm saying? So this case is over if the impeachment goes through. What if she loses her law license because of this ethical, ethical violation? She's no longer the lawyer. Case is over unless you can get some other lawyer to step in and try it. And last I checked, we 10 months away from this election. And after the election, it's a wrap. Okay? Now, about this specific resolution, it accuses her of using her office for political rather than judicial purposes. And this is in violation of Georgia Code 1610D1, which penalizes public officers for willfully violating their oath with imprisonment ranging from one to five years. Ooh, they talk, somebody talk about time. And so somebody type time in the chat room. They talking about giving this gal time. This is what I want y'all to understand, man. If this goes through with this majority Republican assembly, this woman could get one to five years in prison just like that. You understand what I'm saying? This is is what I'm talking about. I told y'all when I first peeped this out, This is not going to go well for these black folks. They're going to end up being scapegoats. Anybody, I mean, look, until you understand white supremacy, racism, everything else is going to confuse you. That's a quote by a gentleman named Neely Fuller. And the truth is, most of these blackity blacks who didn't point this out, they don't understand that because they're just read, they're just listening and regurgitating to what they heard they actually can't process the information incorporated into what they know, into the body of information that they already know 
from lived experiences in other studies in other realms and give it back to you like that. I tell you all guys all the time, read your Bible. The story of humanity and what human beings do is in your Bible every day of the week is right there next to you at that hotel. After you fit ladies, after you finish cheating on your man, just go and whip that Bible out. Your man ain't going to be home to five 30. Anyway, it's two 15. Go and whip that Bible out. Why you, when your little boot and left after y'all leave that holiday in <laughs> read that Bible, you be able to tell the future. Same thing for you fellas. While you getting your chicken wings at 2.15 in the morning after you leave the strip club, go and whip that little pocket Bible out. You know what I'm saying? Read you some scripture. It'll get you there, baby. <laughs> You'll learn a lot about humanity. It's the human experience. Human beings are not going to change. Now, so that's how I'm able to tell you, if you got a black person, it, I mean, it really ain't that intel, but just I'm going to tell you what they're going to do. They're going to whip you up in this system and spit you out. Now, this particular resolution, they're coming at her from all angles, just like, I mean, all angles. And they're coming for a throat. Now, this particular resolution that's in the Georgia Assembly, it, it details 22 specific articles of impeachment. That's like charges. Imagine having 22 felony charges. Woo! You got 22 felony charges. Some of them can land you in jail. Most of them going to cause you to lose your job. Woo. 19 of which claim that Willis's prosecution of former President Trump and his 18 co-defendants under Georgia's organized crime laws was politically motivated. And that violated her over office. Now, check this out. And they're saying that this was driven by uh, this, this RICO prosecution is driven more by political ambitions than the pursuit of justice. They're like, girl, you, you, you not, it's plenty of crime out there in Georgia for you to prosecute all those squatters down there in that Georgia area. Why don't you prosecute some of them squatters? Uh, what my, what my, what my Georgia folks at? They need to what with my Atlanta folks that they she needs to prosecute some of those squatters out there that's sitting in y'all nice houses. That's what she needs to do. You understand? Instead of worrying about Donald Trump and his homies. That's what that that could be real good for you to do that. Instead of trying to be special on the on the on the uh national scene. But nevertheless, you decided to go over and shoot uh, above your pay grade. And so now you got hit with these charges. They say this driven by political ambition and the pursuit of justice and not the pursuit of justice. Now, one of the charges accuses her of withholding vital information, evidence from the jury. Mm, that's an ethical violation in itself. Prosecutors can't withhold exculpatory evidence. There's plenty of prosecutors that lose their license. That's how cases are overturned all the time. Another one of these charges alleges that Willis held unpaid public money due to the state at the time of her swearing in, specifically relating to late fees from her political campaign. In other words, she got sworn in and she owed money to the state. It could be back taxes. It could be a traffic ticket. But she got sworn in knowing she owed that money. And that in itself is an ethical violation. You see how deep? Huh? You see how deep they're going to get her? See, this is what I'm trying to tell you. You got to be careful with the enemies that you choose, fam. This woman decided to go behind enemy lines and pick the biggest, baddest people that, that, that out there to pick on. You picked on 19 white folks in their city, in their town, in their state. Because you wanted to be an attack dog for the Democrat Party. And you didn't think that through. Somebody type modern woman in the chat room. Somebody type consequences in the chat room. Somebody type, uh, uh, <laughs> you're going to pay for it in the chat room. The other, the other one and the biggest one, 
that we know about is that Willis is charged with violating her oath to accept only lawful compensation, right, amidst the allegations of profiting from her relationship with Mr. Wade. Somebody type LeBou in the chat room. Let me break that down. Hey, baby, I can hire any other lawyer in America to prosecute this case, but I'm going to hire you. You don't even have to try out. This is a no bid contract. I'm going to give you $650,000. All right. I'm going to shoot you $650,000. And you just shoot me some out the back door. You ain't got to give it to me in paper. You understand me? We, we going to get these kickbacks and vacations, boo. This is what we going to do. We going to do it big. I'm going to shoot you the six fifty, dollars Okay. All right. And then you do the round the back like Magic Johnson and kick it back to me. And I'm going to alley oop and we're going to be down in the Caribbean. If this was mob, if this is a mafia context, basically, she gave her lover a no bid contract, and then her kickbacks are coming in the form of vacations, luxurious vacations in the tropics and wherever else they're going. That ain't that hard to prove. What other reason? What other, what is your other motivation for giving a man who has never tried a RICO case? And then overpaying him a hundred dollars more an hour than you paying the people who actually tried the Rico case, who fact who are also on the team. Other than the fact that you expected him to do something monetary for you in the form of kickbacks. Somebody type city girls in the chat. <laughs> yeah. City girls. This is some city girl stuff right here. Okay. Now, the crazy part is these impeachment proceedings come in the midst of the scrutiny over Willis's professional conduct, particularly regarding her role in the case against Trump. Central to this controversy is her appointment of Mr. Wade, her boo. Allegedly, she having a personal relationship with it. Allegedly. We just going to say allegedly. All right. But here's the thing. He's a lead attorney. Lead prosecutor in this high profile case. And you and we find out you gave him seven hundred thousand dollars worth of public funds to go on lavish vacations. Don't that smell like some, some catfish to you? Some that smells fishy. It smells like some three day old tilapia that's been sitting out in the sun in lukewarm weather. That's what it smells like. You understand me? It smells like some tilapia. That's what it smells like to me. It smells fishy. You understand? <laughs> okay. So we got potential conflicts of interest. We got misuse of, of, of office. We got personal gain. And so this resolution is going to be voted on by the Georgia State Assembly. And if it's passed, that will lead to a trial in the state Senate. Both of these houses, the upper house and the lower house of Georgia, are dominated by Republicans. So what do you think is going to happen? Huh? It, look, the situation is further compounded by the fact that Georgia State Senate's formation of a special committee to investigate Willis's actions, particularly focusing on the alleged misuse of taxpayers' funds and her prosecution to Trump. You know what they're looking for? They want to see if federal funds were using so they can save that up. Because, see, if it was federal funds used, guess what we're looking at? We're looking at federal crimes. If federal funds are misused, who has jurisdiction over that case? Are y'all with me? Are y'all boy? Huh? What, 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 you, you folks that have done a little time. What happens if you start transporting that dope and them guns over uh, uh, across uh, state lines? Huh? The feds kick in, right? Somebody type the feds in the chat room. The feds are coming through. So let's say, come to find out, this woman allocated six hundred fifty thousand of uh, seven hundred thousand worth of public funds, and some of that was from federal funds. 
Because what they're trying to say is you colluded with the Biden White House and you used uh, 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 COVID-19 funds to prosecute this case, which you then paid to your hu- your labu in a no-bid contract, and he kicked it around the back, right, and, and, and put you on. And y'all taking lavish vacations. So what happens then? What happens then? Well, that depends. That depends if Joe Biden gets reelected or Donald Trump gets elected again. Right? Now, the recent vote in Georgia State Senate, and we, they gave a, de- a decisive margin, 30 to 9, has set in motion this investigation into this woman's professional conduct, uh, uh, this Fulton County uh, DA's professional conduct. That's 30 to 9 that said, yeah, we need to investigate her. Look, the writing is on the wall, baby. I mean, I, I, mean, I see it. The writing is on the wall. They coming for you. What do they say in New Orleans? They coming for your trope. <laughs> Baby girl, they coming for your trope. What you need, your trope, not throat. They coming for your trope. You need to go ahead and retire and go back to Inglewood and hide out. That's what you need to do. And hopefully they leave you alone. You understand? They want to know about your relationship. They about to sit up there and ask you and your man what position y'all do when y'all at the hotel. They even got the woman's hotel, what hotel she was staying in, man. You about to be public, you humiliated, and it's going to be televised. They're going to ask you if you've been having a sexual relationship with this man, and you can't lie because if you lie and then you perjure yourself in Congress, even if it's Georgia, you 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 gonna lose your law license. Now, how are you and him gonna be on the stand testifying, and you supposed to be prosecuting? In, in where is it? What's the capital of Georgia? What is the capital of the state of Georgia? What is it? Uh, what's the capital of the state? Where, where you supposed to be down in Fulton County, and you over at 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 at, at the doggone uh, uh, congressional building being asked what positions you like, what y'all be doing. Well, what did y'all do in wine country when y'all flew out to, to, to California? What islands y'all like to hang out in? What drinks were you drinking? Because you know how they are. They're going to be like, oh, we got a list here. These are the drinks that you ordered. You, apparently, your bill was uh, $278. All of these wasn't Shirley Temples and Cokes. Well, these white people are about to clown you, boo. They about to put their little clown nose on. Eh, eh, eh. So you want to prosecute Donald Trump, huh? Eh, eh. <laughs> they are gonna have that big clown shoes coming in. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I told you. Why on earth would you all allow these liberals, these white liberals, to play you like suckers? That's the all you black attorneys out there. I want you to listen to me. You ones in public office, don't be a darn fool. Okay. They're about to publicly humiliate this person. Okay? You got the, I mean, all of them are saying, they got another guy, Senator Senator Brandon Breach. He was asking the newspaper, he reflected on the decision. He expressed apprehension about the whole situation and suggested maybe it was driven... Uh, 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 personal gain was the reason for the prosecution in the first place. Let me get this straight. All I got to do is indict this guy and y'all going to give me six hundred, six, six, seven hundred dollars seven hundred fifty thousand dollars That's my budget? Oh, well, look, let me, let me see what I'm a city girl thinking. Hmm, let me see what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I got a budget of seven hundred fifty thousand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to appoint my man to be the lead prosecutor, and then I'm going to pay him, and then we're going to be living lavish. That sounds like city girl thinking to me, right? That's that's about city girlish, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, that sounds pretty city girlish to me. And here's the cold part about it. They have, inve they got a, their investigative committee has subpoena power. So that means they don't have to ask you. They can send a subpoena to your bank account, send a subpoena to your credit card accounts. They can send a subpoena to your, 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 your boyfriend's lawyer on the, uh, in the divorce, uh, the, your, your, your boyfriend's wife's lawyer and get the whole file. Because they want to see if there was an expenditure of state funds on these extravagant trips and this fine dining. And, and this so-called security detail that you got. They want to see if there was any potential violations of ethics by Miss Willis and her boo. They want to see if there's any undisclosed gifts. Lord Jesus, please don't let her have bought no diamond rings and pearls and whatnot. Oh, don't let that come out. Because that's show sure enough. Going to be grounds to say you got, that's, you might as well gave up a, a, a package full of money. Slid an envelope under the table with, with some bills in it. You see what I'm saying? Look, the Georgia State Assembly, the Republicans hold a dominant position in there. And they're poised to vote the articles of impeachment against her. Right? So it goes from the, it goes from the House. Now it's in the Georgia Senate. They're going to have a trial. And to me, it seems like they already made up their darn mind. And so given the political landscape and the assembly, an affirmative vote would trigger impeachment, uh, an impeachment trial in the Republican-controlled control Georgia Senate. And what did, how much time is she looking at? Up to five years? Eh? If she get hit with one of them, one of them charges, five years. You got to trial yourself. How you going to put anybody? Look, I predict, let me, if this, unless this woman is a total idiot, I predict she's going to resign from her position or at least take a sabbatical and deal with this mess. They're going to put so much pressure on her, she's going to have to fall back. Okay? You getting tried your darn self. You got ethics complaints yourself. They trying to take, and you still want to probably... You don't have the time for it, baby. You got to know how to, you not, you got to know when it's over. It's over. You tried. Man down. Baby, go sit down somewhere. It's only going to get worse. I don't want to see them lynch you like that. I told you guys this about two or three years ago. Black women have reached these positions of power. They've been uplifted and they got these positions of power. And even though white zaddy gave you these positions of power, he still don't like to share power with nobody. Whether it's a black man or a, a, a black woman or whatever, he don't want nobody else in power but himself. And so when they see all these black women around the country, prosecutors, attorney generals, especially when you start turning on them, even the white liberals that elected you, like the idea of watching you getting taken down. They set you up just to pull that rug out from up under you. That's why you, 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 you don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Look, it is the nature of what it is. You might have individual white friends that are cool, but as a collective, when people get together, they always go to their own side. That's why races and cultures tend to stick together. You should have saw this coming. You even got the Fulton County. This is the, now Fulton County, where she's at. So you got the Georgia State Senate, the Georgia Assembly. You got the Ethics Board, the Lawyer Ethics Board. Now you got the Fulton County uh, a committee. In you, the chairman of Fulton County has an audit committee. And they've launched a separate inquiry into where the money went. Woo! <laughs> this is just the local stuff that's going on, fam. This is just local. 
because they also got a federal level situation going on with the House Judiciary Committee is actively conducting an investigation into Nathan Wade, a brother, the brother, right? Boo. They conducting the, uh, they want to see particularly where the money, the flow of federal funds through Fulton County to him. Where'd you get that money from? Because we know Fulton County don't have no $650,000 to profit. You said the White House told you to do it? Really? Oh, okay. They said they were going to look the other way of use that. We we need to know that. See? And the judge who is sitting in the Donald Trump RICO case wants Willis to respond to some written questions regarding her alleged affair. This is getting messy, man. Somebody type messy in the chat room. Somebody type messy in the chat room. So you got all these inquiries that Willis is scheduled to participate in, televised hearings in a couple of weeks, where she's going to face questioning regarding the alleged affair in front of the RICO case judge, in front of the judge. Can you imagine that? You are sitting in front of a judge and you got to sit there and answer. Huh? Answer questions about what you've been doing with your, your body parts, with the man sitting next to you that's prosecuting the case. How is this woman going to process? How, how can she even concentrate on the Trump case? That's what I want to know. She can't, in my opinion. Nevertheless, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, man. Y'all hit the number one button. Y'all hit that number one button. We shall return shortly. Now, Prism has come to me with something. So everybody, please listen. She's going to be talking at length, but this is extremely important, I feel. So with that said, uh, Prism, you have the floor. Hey, everybody. I don't know if everybody's aware of what's going on in um, YouTube. Are you aware? If you are aware of the situation with the attorney, can you please put a one in the chat, please? Yeah, everybody put a one in the chat if you know what what person we're talking about. If you don't, um, basically, we have a lawyer who's positioning himself to be the next Kevin Samuels. But Kevin Samuels, all people would make fun of him and stuff, wasn't that dangerous this guy if he has his way is going to be um this this guy's a problem and it's something that needs to be addressed get your hustle understand is gonna hate you regardless get that out of your head that fantasy world where ain't hating on you there was this walrus tether looking by the name of dennis Spurling. Who is Dennis Sperling? Well, before the confrontation, I couldn't tell you who he was. Nonetheless, I provided coverage on this really, really strange, suspected pet ambulance chasing attorney known as Dennis Sperling. Come to find out, he had a television show, two seasons. I just have a problem with men like that. I think because they have achieved in the world, because that somehow gives them a right you scripture you complaining about ladies if you got 14 women hating on you you need to figure out how to, to get the 16 before the summer get here i want to give my thoughts on dennis sperling say something that's a flat out lie this person has been so let me make the announcement right now negatively targeting well i would say targeting black women negatively if there's any haters in here right now that don't have nobody to hate on, feel free to hate on me. Sit back there and say my hair ain't luxurious when you know it is. Oh, man, what's up, what's up? Shout out to Big Bass like man. You be coming up with them videos, man. That stuff is hilarious, man. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button, man. Y'all hit the number one button. And, um, and uh, <laughs> y'all hit the number one button, baby. So let's recap a little bit what we're talking about, man. So Fannie Willis is in trouble with the Georgia uh, uh, State Senate. They're investigating her. 
Uh, the locals are trying to get her about this improper, unfair uh, uh, relationship with special prosecutor Nathan Wade, who turns out to be her man, even though he's married. You understand? We, and y'all need to get them super chats up. Y'all need to pay me for my time. I'm thorough up in here. So y'all need to pay me for my time. And I'll definitely read those super chats later on. But she's being impeached and it's being led by a congressman named Representative Byrd. And uh, and it has support from people like other other. They want to impeach her. They're ex accusing her of exploiting her position for political political advantage. You got a, a, the national media is on her. butt. like, I mean, they are on her. And this is escalated from a local issue to a national one. Uh, it's being reported in all the major news outlets, Forbes magazine, highlighting the shift in media focus from Trump to Willis. They they not tripping on Trump no more. They on you. You see what I'm saying? Um, who else we got? Political criticism, ethical concerns, politicians. Uh, they looking at it like, man, you know, <laughs> you got ethical violations out here, man. You see what I'm saying? You got misuse of funds by you and Wade. You know, taxpayer money, personal trips. Y'all out here drinking on the taxpayer money. You understand? And this is highlighting the potential use of mis misuse, uh, misuse of funds. You know, you got an ongoing impeachment process, and that raises questions about whether or not Fonnie Willis has the capacity to even manage this case. She's going to have to hire attorneys for herself, her and Wade. She'd be a darn fool to go down to the doggone courthouse, go down to the legislator and try to stand in front of there and defend herself. Shout out to my man, uh, Brian L. Uh, Ponder. Just stepped down, Miss Fonnie Willis. Yeah, Atlanta didn't have them problems with Paul, Paul Howard. Yeah, man, right? Remember, she took his spot. Now, remember, y'all remember that? She took Paul Howard's spot. Shout out to Brian Ponder. And, 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 you know, she was supposed to do better. And it's not the best that she, she was her high point was prosecuting those rappers under the RICO charge. She should have stuck with prosecuting mumble rappers. The last thing you want to do is try to prosecute some folks who will fight you back hard. It's just going to end up costing the state and the county a whole lot of money that y'all can't afford anyway. You see what I'm saying? The other thing, possible collusion between Nathan Wade and the White House officials possibly influencing the case against Trump. And that's what we're going to get into, okay? With the Freedom of Information Act, we're going to learn that. Uh, we got the, she's got ethics complaint. Brian, if you want to come up and chop it up with me, man, I'll, I'll shoot you the link. I'll send you the link if you want to come in lawyer to lawyer. Because I think the people, the, the average folk, the regular folk don't realize how much trouble this young woman is in. They think, oh yeah, just more trouble. It, it, no, nah, no, nah, you, you, you out of pocket. You see what I'm saying? You all the way out of pocket. Here's another thing, you out of, and so people don't really. And here's another thing: the fact that you messing around allegedly uh, with with a married man, that's not a good look either, boo. Shout out to my man Brandon Jackson. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all coming in with the uh, with the cash apps and the super chat. So it's like, darn, baby, you, you, you doing, you doing too much, Brian. I'm gonna shoot you the link if you want to come in in about uh, ten minutes, fifteen minutes when I uh, get 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 the folks coming in here. Thank you, say, Brian. Thank you, thanks so much for the great effort. Yeah, man, that's what I'm. That's what I think we should be doing. You got divorce evidence. The the ex wife is trying to line line you up. You got the community backlash. People have started to look at you sideways. Uh, you still ain't had a trial yet. You got a couple of people to take cop a plea, but all of that can be overturned. You, you being scrutinized. I mean, but I look. This is what I need y'all to understand. The matter. This it, it, the fact that she went after Trump. She went after Trump and his people. Right. The irony. That now they're going after her. And here's the thing. The scenario unfolds with a sense of irony that is so profound it could really rival any twist in like a, a political drama movie. You see what I'm saying? We, as we discuss this mess that Fannie Willis, Fannie Willis is in, known for initiating RICO charges against her former president, our former president, uh, against former president Donald Trump, 
in a move perceived by many as aligning herself with the Biden administration's interests. Yet in a striking turn of events, Willis herself might now be facing uh, uh, RICO charges under the RICO statute. And that's what I want to dig into tonight. This time for conspiracy to commit federal election fraud and interference. Reflect on the gravity of this situation. A prosecutor who sought to apply a legal tool traditionally reserved for tackling organized crime, like the Italian mafia. And she used it against a former president. Now she may be entangled in a similar legal scare. These allegations, if they're substantiated against her, okay, could lead her right down that road. Let's not forget the implications for New York City DA Alvin Bragg and New York Attorney General Letitia James. There are whispers of their coordination with the White House in these legal actions against Trump. Also, could they too find themselves embroiled in a RICO case? Huh? Particularly if Trump returns to power and appoints a U.S. Attorney General who opts to follow this route. You understand what's happening here? We basically going to see all these black lawyers literally professionally lynched. The irony is stark. But it's tragic because it's not good for any of us. These legal, legal maneuvers initially portrayed as no, a noble quest for justice, they might just unravel before our eyes, exposing a complex web of political maneuvering and dubious legal efforts. Somebody type black attack dogs in the chat room. These, this, I mean, look, there's some serious questions that arise. Black folks have already always known that the legal system can be used impartially. We get hit with it all the time. Traditionally, that's why black folks don't trust the legal system. Because we know the DA get a mind that puts you in jail. They just make up charges. This is not fair. This is not just. One on one is politically biased. And, and now if they can do this to a president, if you got Fonnie Willis, you got the district attorney uh, for, for New York, you got the attorney general for New York. All of them can come together and do this. What does that make you all think? They've been doing it, right? That's what it makes you think. Now let's learn something tonight. Let's learn something tonight, okay? Y'all with me? Y'all hit the number one button. Y'all with me? Let's learn something. Somebody type Rico in the chat room. Who knows what Rico means? If you know what Rico means, spell it out. Huh? If you know what Rico means, spell it out. One of the people being prosecuted for Rico. Former New York mayor, Julie, Julie, uh, uh, Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani. He was one of the stars of Rico. Now, what does Rico require? Now, Rico is it stands for the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, and it requires one thing. It requires is an enterprise which can be any individual partnership, cooperation or association or other legal entity, any union or group of individuals associated in fact, and it doesn't need to be a legal entity. You see? Doesn't need to be a legal entity. It could just be a group of people of associates to get together and decide to do something. And the individuals must have committed at least two acts of racketeering activity 
from a set of 35 crimes, 27 federal and eight state crimes within 10 years. That's broad. They got it, you know, they got uh, man. That's a wide berth. It's very broad. The other thing is, the acts must not be isolated events, but part of a continuous criminal conduct. I'm going to get to the analysis in a minute. You see? They're not isolated events. And they got to see a continuous criminal conduct. And this is crucial in establishing the pattern of racketeering. Now, here's the thing. The defendant's racketeering activities must be related to the enterprise. And this can involve investing the proceeds from patterns of racketeering into the enterprise. In other words, you take the money you make and put it back. This was for the mob. Now, I'm going to give you this, and I got my good friend Brian Ponder down here, Attorney Ponder. But here's the hypothetical. I want you to look. A hypothetical case against Fonnie Willis, Alvin Bragg, and Letitia James, and any of those other prosecutors. This is how they could be charged. There's an enterprise. This could be the group or network, potentially including certain legal offices or other parties that function to achieve the common purpose. And what was the common purpose? Prosecute Donald Trump prevent him from running for president, right? And this could involve actions that fall under the specific, specific federal, state statutes and criminal statutes, such as obstruction of justice, fraud, or bribery, which could relate to the alleged interference uh, in the election. This is what's listed, okay? This is what's listed. Let me tell you something. You got... Bribery, extortion, money laundering, mail fraud, wire fraud, bank fraud, security fraud, drug trafficking, kidnapping, murder, arson, robbery, counterfeiting, forgery, embezzlement, obstruction of justice, witness tampering, terrorism, trafficking in stolen vehicles, smuggling, copyright infringement, racketing, gambling, prostitution offenses, any of these, state stuff. Burglary, battery, assault, drug distribution, fraud, embezzlement, forgery. You see what I'm saying? All of that is broad enough that they could be brought up on RICO charges. Okay? And it wasn't isolated. Here's the thing. If the DA wants to charge you, they're going to charge you. And then it's on you to get yourself out of that situation. You understand what I'm saying? Now, look, without further ado, I'm going to bring Brian Ponder in here so we can do what we've been doing now. You, you guys need to remember something. Remember when that young YouTube lady got prosecuted for that defamation case? We sat here and, we sat here and sorted this out and called it. And we told you that that little lady that was defending her was not doing a very good job. Okay. And Brian has been on here several other times, and we didn't let you know. So now what you're about to see is two lawyers shop it up about this hot mess that Fonnie Wilson done got herself into. Welcome to the broadcast, brother Brian Pine. How you doing today, sir? Good, 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 Dennis. How you doing? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> brother, did it have you? Let me say this. Mm -hmm. What are your initial thoughts when you saw this woman got this. She got now, hold on. Let, now Brian's a lawyer too. Brian been practicing for a long time. And 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 she got an ethics complaint. Right. That's look, she got subpoenaed to testify at somebody uh, at somebody's divorce, her, her booze divorce. That got delayed. Because the wife found out mm -hmm. that she was getting giving this man six hundred some thousand dollars, and they want to know where the money comes from because that is community property. I think Georgia is a community property state, right? I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh huh. But I, I think so. so. Well, we want to know where this extra income coming from because technically we still married. So where's this money coming from? Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 hold on a minute. Hold on. That ain't it, Brian. That ain't it. 
Her first mistake was trying to put them 19 white people in jail down in Georgia. I'm going to leave it at that. Go ahead, brother. The floor is there. Leave them white folk alone. Go ahead. I'm going to let you have it. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, brother. This is a mess. Talk on this thing. Yes. Do we have an echo on your side? Is there a volume on over there? It might be yours, bro. But go ahead. I'm listening. Oh, okay. Well, when I first heard this, you obviously, you, the allegation was um, without evidence. So mm -hmm. that, that defendant that filed that motion did not put up any evidence. Now, at first, you wondered if it was just speculation, but mm -hmm. we sort of know what it is. Someone called it out. So you have a mole. Someone called it out. They didn't want to give up that person. Mm -hmm. So that's that's A. B, Miss uh, Willis, when someone accuses you of something so egregious, Ooh. she has she's the she's the DA of Fulton County. That's the most populated county in Georgia. Mm. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really the number one district attorney position in the state of Georgia. Oh, I wow. would say. Okay. I mean, you have Cobb County, you have other counties, but this is Fulton County. This is the biggest county uh, in Georgia, in the capital city. The first thing she, any person would do is what? Deny the allegations or say nothing. Now, mm -hmm. there's been some allegations with the Young Thug trial that's come about, and she just ignores the, the, the hoopla. And when they first did the indictment of Trump, there was a whole lot of talk. She ignored it. However, mm -hmm. on this particular allegation, she goes to church it oh, goes in a big rant. Right. Yeah, man. A big, a big race rant. No one cares about your race. Mm -hmm, she mm -hmm. goes on a race rant talking about uh, how that, that gentleman, Mr. Wade, is all qualified and they didn't say anything about the other two. You're not accusing people look, with the other look, two. You, you look, missed Brian, the point. Yeah. I know, Brian, about the brother being qualified. I don't talk bad about brother. No, no, no. He's a traffic, he's a traffic court judge, man. Listen, listen. He's a traffic court judge, Brian. Traffic court judge. You, you, Brian. I, you know how many felonies he's prosecuted? I don't know. I mean, they say they say none. Come on now. So you picking your boot. This is this is why I'm gonna get this out before I forget it. This is the biggest entanglement since we that we've seen since uh the the, the Jada Pickett. <laughs> this, this, this is, is an entanglement. Yes, this is an entanglement. But this is you way telling me high. this man has not had one felony prosecution? I don't think he's ever prosecuted. Bro, I've had felonies. more felony defenses. I've had three felony defenses, and I can't stand the criminal justice system. Right. But he has not one felony prosecution. Uh, and you, uh, allegedly. you got hold on, Brian. Let me set the picture. Allegedly. Just the Super Bowl. And you didn't and have you're no starting wide receiver, and you ain't caught one ball yeah, in the any NFL. Playoff, no playoff game. No playoff experience. They just put you no, in you straight out of Bowl. high school. Come on to Super Bowl. Uh, let, 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 let me let me give him something this else. Is the case of the century now, you, by the way. You the last time you played quarterback was mm -hmm. Pop Warner when you was 10 years old. And they just drop you off in the Pro Bowl and say, "All right, you go ahead and call the plays." And that this is what, but it, this is this is what who this woman picked, bro. What does that sound like to you, bro? Listen, 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 listen. You about to Brian? See. Let's. What does that sound like to you? Well, first of all, it's being played out right in front of your eyes. So we, you know, we calling it now. It sounds like allegedly uh, misuse of funds. Now I, I yes. sent you something, Dennis. Uh -huh. Then as soon as she got into office. She was yeah. accused of mis misuse of funds because I think it was about four hundred eighty-three thousand dollars grant that's supposed to be used for um, a certain purpose, and she used it for another purpose, and someone mm. called it out, and she fired mm. that person. So this is unfortunately this is not her first rodeo. Oh, she like a cat. She like to hide her poop. Okay. Yeah. So okay. so and by the way, I remember when Mr. Howard was in the office, and I think I may have lived in Atlanta at that time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I voted for Mr. Howard. I, I, I was, I was, I was sad to see Miss Willis, and I, you know, I just didn't know her. Um, yeah. I think she already worked in that office and sort of uh, vote got voted up. But I was just, I just, just not having a good feeling about her. But I didn't know her. I'm just, it's just, I did not know her. But she but, came in with those wave of lovely ladies that uh, she did. That that you know they was taking over. Remember, it was like a black girl magic, a hot girl they, summer, they, they, they something fired, like that. They fired. Yes. Almost, they, they, they displaced almost all of Mr. Howard's mm. people. It was a really a whole revamp. Yeah. But again, before she left, some people had saw some uh, misgivings and, and, and accused her of some things, and they got fired 
for whistleblow file on whistleblow mm. lawsuit allegedly. But mm. um, but 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 back to this, Dennis. She goes yeah. to church and goes on a rant Hallelujah. about these allegations. Yes, and we all know as lawyers <laughs> all too quickly when you're talking around. <laughs> Uh, you, 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 no, she you talks her, you and Liz on doing uh, uh, one or two things, and she did not address any of those two things head on. Are you sleeping with the man, and are you utilizing funds that you have given that man almost over uh, almost a uh, three quarters of a million dollars? Six hundred fifty thousand. Six hundred fifty seven thousand. But, 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 and you benefited from that. Y'all taking the man trip. is the, the municipal court judge and a, and, and a part time uh, 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 personal injury lawyer. He ain't never prosecuted any felonies, uh, uh, Brian. Over this past year, he's probably made more money than he's made in practice over the past several years. Yeah, decades. He, I have never heard of the man before. Never heard of him. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, she has not addressed it head on, which is concerning. And as a lawyer, if you're going to speak about something and not and not unequivocally deny it, then is it, I think it's something there. That's just my guess. My guess is something there. My guess is she's if she hasn't resigned yet, she's not going to resign. She's going to take. She's going to. She doesn't understand. They're about to, they're about to uh, publicly lynch. I don't know what right. word used earlier. This yeah. is going to be nasty. Yeah, yeah twenty look. charges from the 22, state. Twenty-two, Brian. Twenty-two. Twenty-two, 22 charges about to be that are filed. And you have a Republican uh, based Senate, I think. Yeah, Georgia. Georgia, Georgia, Republican base dominated by the dominated. The, the Georgia Assembly is dominated by Republicans. The Georgia yeah. Assembly is dominated by Republicans. Mm. The Assembly has already, they're going to take a vote. They're already going to send it over there to the Senate and they're going to have a trial. And impeachment means mm -hmm. you get forcibly removed. Mm -hmm. And see, guess mm -hmm. what's going to happen when you get forcibly removed? The person that takes your place is not going to cover up your poop. They're going to mm -hmm. be like, here it is. Come look at all of it. And they're mm -hmm. going to see all the dirt that this woman has been doing over there. Right. All the little notes. You see what I'm saying? Right. Here's, here's my thing, Brian. Here's my thing, brother. And I don't think people truly understand this. Mm -hmm. Her first mistake was picking a fight with some folk that can fight back on their territory. Why would you? This is my man. Fundamentally speaking, bro. You got you trying to put in jail 19 mm -hmm. of the most powerful white people in Georgia, including the former president of the United States. Mistake you don't think one. you're making any enemies? Mistake number one. I mean, you don't you don't think those people know each other, know somebody on the ethics board, and you don't think that? Of course they do. Yeah. Of course they do. And they're gonna and they're gonna conspire to put you down because you out of pocket. Right. You make an under and, and the whole point, Brian. If she's making these enemies for who? Huh? She's well, making these enemies to try to be cozy up to the Democrat Party up in Washington, D.C. You okay. see what I'm saying? Dennis, your yeah. point. Your point. Mm -hmm. Before she filed these charges, where did she go? Have a meeting with the president. Had a, had a, meeting, okay. had a meeting with the White House and White House attorneys. So but now it's being looked at as a political, using her office as a political sword. To yep. advance the Democratic candidate. Yeah. Now all this stuff is going to come out. This is this is all this stuff is out. So she has to resign. I don't know. She got to. You got to keep in mind, Dennis. I don't think that this is going to go away from her for her. Oh no. Because when she resigns, she, they, 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 they have already started the process. So I don't know what kind of immunity she may have while in office. I think that's the purpose of the impeachment. Mm -hmm. To sort of get force her out of office, but it's we may be looking at another. You remember the Bill Campbell days in Atlanta when the, 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 he went to jail? He's he a former mayor, but uh, there's a history in Atlanta of some politicians going to, to jail. Woo. Uh, we, we 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 may be seeing the next uh, uh, official in Atlanta mm -hmm. that may have to serve some jail time. Man, and I don't, I you know, I'm I hope you don't, that don't stop me, but you know, they. It's serious. I think it's very serious. And I don't know if people recognize it, but this is likely going to go into some formal charges, uh, not just ethical, but actual criminal charges because there are federal funds being used. So you look at the federal charges. Yeah. The next district attorney that comes in will most likely be, uh, how should I say it, of the same type of party. Uh, mm -hmm. So you wonder if any state charges will, will, will happen. But keep in mind, you have um, uh, uh, a 
attorney generals for Georgia. I think they're pretty much staying out of it right now. Mm-hmm. The oh, governor. Yeah. But but you got you got charges coming at all angles that can uh, mm-hmm. possibly implicate her. But she has to go now. I, she I think she should step down. But and, and I let, think it's gonna be a forced move. Let me run. Let me run something by you, man. So I've mm-hmm. been thinking about this RICO situation, and mm-hmm. she's opened the door for political prosecutions mm-hmm. under the RICO Act. Mm-hmm. And if you conspired with the White House attorneys, and yeah. if you conspired with the White House attorneys, yeah. you, Letitia James, Bragg, mm-hmm. whoever else, y'all sat and met with the White House attorneys to do what? Political to try to influence this election. That's election fraud. That's election interference. And if you and in doing so, if you committed fraud, if you uh, committed some sort of financial conduct, fraud can fit broadly under that. Mm-hmm. Uh, embezzlement, taking funds that shouldn't be yours, you got a problem. Here's another thing: there, there's a big hunch. There's a hunch that they diverted. Mm-hmm. They diverted federal funds designated for COVID nineteen. Oh, wow. To this, to this, to this, uh, this six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars that old boy got, and so now oh, you're looking oh. at federal charges. Yeah, and so and so both. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying, it's not gonna get any better. It's not gonna get any better. It's gonna get worse. You're gonna lose your law license. Mm-hmm. First of all, you're gonna get fired. You're gonna lose your law license. You might end up in jail. You might end up doing federal time. Your career is over. That's what I'm looking. She can't rebound from this. No way. You go I, ahead, bro. Go I ahead. agree. I sent you uh, a letter. There's a representative, Andrew Clyde. Mm-hmm. I'm going to forward this to you, where he, I had not seen it in this federal aspect, mm-hmm. but he spelled it out so beautifully on how this is implicated by the misuse of federal funds because mm-hmm. this DA's office gets a significant amount of federal funds and some of this you don't know how it's apportioned, but some of this could have been misused by her. Yeah, she's a she's a big trouble. And Dennis, we all know who's going to be the next president. Oh yeah, and and yeah. depending on the statute of limitations, oh they I got can, time. I can, I, they got time. It was I, like four oh, years. Oh, they yeah, they're gonna put it. Yeah, they, man. But 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 as you alluded to, this is not a solo effort. This was a, mm-hmm. cons- a conspired effort, allegedly mm-hmm. politically. And so all those people involved mm-hmm. in those meetings, I believe. We'll, uh, we'll we'll see some wrath, I believe, in the future. It's not just her. For now, yeah. it's on her. But I think we're going to see more uh, people come into play because this is going to get heavily investigated. Yeah, it, it definitely is, man. And like, I I don't. I'm tired of saying I, I told y'all so. Right. But the only well, the, the biggest lesson that I can learn. I did, but you didn't even believe me. You didn't believe like, nah, Dennis is wrong. Remember, tell him, tell him what you were thinking, bro. When you first said it, I'm gonna be honest with you. I did not think because this is before any of this stuff popped up. Okay, you called it out as soon as soon mm-hmm. after these indictments, and I, and I honestly did not. When I heard you say, it, I did not believe it. I thought that it will it will it will be a clean prosecution. I didn't think that there would be a conviction. But I thought it would be a, a clean prosecution, and did not think about mm-hmm. what you uh, predicted. Uh, I didn't think that would come to pass. But as soon as this hit, I was like, "Man, here we go again." Dennis is right. Well, you know, yeah, I know, man. But you know, in my books, rules of living, y'all know you you probably got one of the first copies back in 2016. But in my books, yeah. one of my practices, one of my main, the first thing I do in any litigation that I'm interested in is I always try to figure out who's the lawyer. So True. I will find out, I'm going to look in the process, I'm going to see who they are, I'm going to Google them. I'm going to figure out who they are. I'm going to figure out what school they went to, what universities they graduated from. Uh, I'm going to analyze them. I want to look at them. You know, or did you go to Georgetown or did you go to Har- Harvard? Mm-hmm. Did you go to uh, TSU or did you go to uh prairie view wherever whoever you are i want to know who you are it's not going to just be because i want to because what i've learned in the practice of law it's about the individual it's about this person's emotions it's about what can i do to drive this person's emotions because see like i tell people all the time i read my bible and i know that all people are subject to those 
seven deadly sins. If you can figure out which ones they succumb to, then you can use that against them. Mm -hmm. The devil, uh, the Satan, we talk about Satan. His was vanity. Mm -hmm. This woman's right here, Fanny Wills. Hers is arrogance and, and mm -hmm. envy and, 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 and vanity. And if you can use that, whether it's gluttony, lazy, sloth, whatever, you can figure you can win a case based on how you drive this person's emotions. You see what I'm saying? And so, and if you figure out what moves and motivates a person, well, my God, you know which direction they headed. And right. so once I but but in doing that, I the first thing I know, all these people are black. Right. I mean, right. every last one of them, even the dude down in Haiti, he's not making much traction in that documentation case. Mm -hmm. But the process, the, but the attorney general or the U.S. attorney general in, in South in, in South Miami or South Florida in charge of the document case is black. Mm -hmm. A black dude, a Haitian dude. You see what I'm saying, man? Yep. Alvin Bragg, a black dude. Okay. Letitia James, black woman. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Fonnie Willis, black woman. Man, when I start seeing that, I'm like, oh, hell no. Hell no. This is this is a setup. Y'all hit the number one button, man. What else you want to add to this thing? I'm trying to pull that picture up that you sent me, but it's not working. Um, we have to find the PDF document. Mm -hmm. That letter is, uh, it really spells out the, the, how the federal funds intertwines with it. And speaking of Letitia James, you know, are you surprised that that case got all the way through without her being implicated? Is she is she keep it real clean? Well, in it hadn't. Here's my here's my thing. The way I look at the way that judge is performing, mm -hmm. and so here's here's the thing about that particular New York case. They're basically saying you benefited by estimating that your property was worth more than what it is, even though in the contracts that you submitted to the bank, there's a disclosure saying you need to get your own appraiser to determine. You see, on top of that, the loans that they received by putting their property up allowed them, the, the bank profited, but it allowed them to continue doing business where they would may have not otherwise had money to do so. And so Letitia James is saying, well, you profited from a fraud. But hell, man, if if you selling your house, you selling your five hundred thousand dollar house, you up as much as you can. your house worth one point two million, baby. Yeah. And if your name is Donald Trump, you said not only is it worth one, it's worth one point two million because I lived in it. I used to use these toilets, <laughs> and for nostalgia's purposes, how many right. of y'all look? How many of y'all would have paid more money for that OJ uh, o OJ Simpson's right. truck? Than you just saw? Oh, absolutely. If the truck is worth 500, the mere fact that OJ Simpson used that car to get away, him and his boy Kurt, whatever his mm -hmm. name was, you'll pay three, four thousand dollars for that just to have it. You see what I mean? So Mar a Lago might be worth the billion dollars because the ex president just lived in it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, this is what you got to understand. I get where he's coming from, but this particular judge is saying, Oh, no, you overcharge, you treating him like. First of all, everybody does it. We all throw a little extra on top of that house that we're trying to sell. You got that old three hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Look, you know this house worth uh, uh, three sixty five. Mm -hmm. That's your starting point. You want to start high and make them start low, and then you meet somewhere in the middle and hope you get a little bit more. But they saying, "Oh no, that's a crime." They about to put all mm -hmm. the the, the real estate business, real estate people out of business with that lawsuit. Go ahead, bro. So let's 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 correct something. This is what I was thinking as you were speaking. Mm -hmm. That was a civil case. Yeah, civil case, right. So it's not a crime. So we can also attribute that it didn't get too dirty because it's civil. All they fight over some money, which he can. But bro, but but we talking about three hundred million. Million. I mean, and they, you talking about three? You trying to and they're trying to put him out of New York and say he can't do business in New York anymore. Right. Well, he kept it and she's still, that she's still Letitia James is still a public figure, and they do have allegations that she met with him. She oh, met wow. with Bud. Uh, so it's not just oh, same same situation. Saying so, yeah, she said it. That's what it's saying. Mm -hmm. So, so my thing is this, bro. My mm -hmm. thing is this. Uh, all of, I see all these people as being used as attack dogs, right. and I'm just not gonna be nobody's fool like that. I mean, you know. That is it's just sad to me, man. It's just sad to me. And you sent this letter. Let's take a look at what it says, Brian. You sent this letter, man. Uh, let me get you back up. What 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 is it that you wanted to point out in this this deal here? Well, it's it's a dense letter. It's a lot of information, but mm -hmm. it 
it it explains how uh, the Miss uh, Willis potentially misused federal funds because when you first think about this, you think about this being a state case, a local mm -hmm. Georgia issue, but actually her office receives a significant amount of federal funds. And so now that's being called into question. And um, this representative, Andrew Clyde, I think spearheaded where we are now with the 22 charges uh, calling basically right. this letter, I think really set the cat was the catalyst to really open this up and take a close look at it. Uh, whereas, On January 18th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what that, that's what you're looking at there. It's a very detailed letter. As evidence yeah. indicates Nathan Wade was retained in November of 2021 by DA Willis as special prosecutor in Fulton County's case against President Trump regarding the 2020 uh, presidential election. The New York Times reported that Mr. Wade was DA Willis's old friend. Mm. However, mm -hmm. a court motion filed January 8, 2024 by attorneys for Mike Roman, a co-defendant in case alleges that Mr. Wade was DA's romantic partner and he financially benefited from the relationship. Records further indicate that Mr. Wade has been paid by taxpayer dollars. Uh, yeah, and uh, let me see what else you got here. Let's see here. At least 653 Six hundred fifty-three thousand eight hundred eighty-one in legal fees. That's a lot of damn money, bro. A lot. Shit, a lot. that's one case in one year. A lot in one year. That's that, and, 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 and then it's some of the and 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 so that's a lot of money. But you know, you know, you can take a lot of time to spend on a case. But those invoices, you're gonna talk about it. The invoices just don't make it's it's padded. The invoices are yeah. padded. How do they, you, they bro? Spend it here's day my question. Something. Here's my question for you, Brian. Mm -hmm. This dude made six hundred fifty-three thousand eight hundred eighty-one dollars in legal fees in less than mm -hmm. in less than two years, making two hundred fifty dollars an hour. Yeah, mm -hmm. bro, two hundred fifty dollars mm -hmm. an hour ain't gonna get you no no six hundred. That I mean, that's, that's I mean, let's, that's, let's that's, how many hours working. a week? Let's where's my calculator? How many that'd hours? Be, that'd, be, that'd be 40 hours a day. <laughs> oh, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Be, man. He must have clothed uh, himself. He must have clothed himself. Man, let's, hold let's on a Where is my calculator? Let me, I'm, I'm pulling mine now. Let's add that up. Let's see how many hours that is that this brother would have had to work. So you work 40 hours a week. That's 2080 a year. So that's times 250. If you work, if you work. 40 hours a week at $250, that's $520,000. 40 month. hours a week, and how many, now what? So 2080, so 40, if you work 40 hours a week times 52, I bet she'll give you 2080, 2,080 hours for 40 hours a week. That's how many hours if you work nine to five every day on a case, if you make it two. So if you're making 250, 2080 times 250. Oops. Well, how are you going to do all That's, that? He's going on vacation and, in the uh, Bahamas. Yeah, you're running a whole other firm. And, I mean, he must have stopped and retired. Is this your else. only job, player? It, it would have to be to, to, to accrue that much in fees so as he's working. I mean, it's, it's a lot of working, but again, as they point out, some of these invoices just don't make sense. It's like, look, look at it's going to tell you travel two thousand dollars bill to travel to Athens. Athens is uh, out is two hours from Atlanta. Mm. So it's just, it's just, it's just, you know, that's criminal, right? When you when you taking state funds, and so mm. he's going to have some issues if he is billed inappropriately and taking these uh funds uh by uh false billing practices it's, it's gonna be a mess i think they're both gonna be on different sides of the of the uh of the yard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm still doing my adding lawyer earned 653 dollars in two years per hour it's two fifty an hour mm-hmm how many hours per 
Well, well. Uh, and yeah, so I think he's gonna have some problems too. And I don't think it's not just her. I think I think so, brother. Shout out to Hologram EMC said this this is boss B in the ultimate form of morality. Let me see. Let's see, bro. To earn 650. Oh no, dog. To earn 653,881 dollars in two years at a rate of 250 per hour. A lawyer would have to have approximately worked 25.5 hours per week every right. week for basically 104 weeks. Right. Two years, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. I mean, that means that he was basically, they're saying he was working on this every day. Well, how are you going to take them vacations if you're working on this every day, man? Damn. I don't know no lawyer. Okay, how old is this brother? 50 something years old? He ain't working. Up. Come on, let's like keep it. Come on, bro. Bro, bro let's be let's, let's keep it one. Look, look, look. It doesn't look good. I, I you know, I hate to see him go out like that. I hate to see it. Yeah, I hate to see him go out like that. I, I don't know. I'm messing know. with those white people, you know, first of all. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, man. And now you, you, over that, you over there being an attack dog. Taking all that money. Yeah, they, they gave you them little trinkets and you about to lose it all. He, I mean, it's earned. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, talk yeah, him. yeah. I mean, I, look, I, it's, it's, they made the ultimate sacrifice. You know, they voluntarily, did. they made the ultimate sacrifice. I, I think it's not just their uh, career. Uh, I, I do think that with the amount of money involved here, mm -hmm. we're looking at uh, some criminal components. And those twenty-two charges, like I said, some of those are going to definitely. Um, mature, somebody just some somebody say the feds are coming. Say the feds are watching. Oh, yeah. The feds are watching. Yeah. Fanny, you done mm -hmm. messed around and got that fanny wax. You, you got to play it. away with that married man, <laughs> your old friend. That's all I have to say. All this is allegedly. So, Miss Willis, allegedly, you're watching, that's right. You're, allegedly, you're, allegedly. I hope, I hope that's everything. Right. Don't want no everything I wish the best for you. We wish the best for you, Fanny. We wish the best for you, baby girl. Hey, Chief Minglewood. Inglewood, oh, yeah. somebody type uh, Inglewood in the chat room. <laughs> she from Inglewood. Yeah, well, mm -mm -mm. she's a boss. Sad. This, this that boss. This that boss chick destiny. I want all you boss, boss bees out there. This is your destiny right here. You think you can yeah. do what you want? Can't nobody who gonna oh. somebody who gonna check me, boo, in the chat room. Yeah. Somebody type yeah. who gonna check me, boo. Uh, the 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 the, the governor of Georgia. <laughs> That's who gonna check you. That's who's checking you. Man, here's the thing, and I find this ironic, okay? The use of RICO in the political context. Both of these cases, the, the imaginary case against Fannie Willis and these other black lawyers mm -hmm. and the Trump case, which actually exists, mm -hmm. um, both illustrate how, Re how the RICO statute can be applied politically in a politically charged context. And in Trump's case, the charges uh, relate to alleged effort to influence election results. And in the hypothetical case against Willis, if the allegations about financial misconduct and kickbacks were true, because if this is a kickback, yeah. you giving me money and then me right, you you? accepting gifts and vacations, yeah. that's the kickback. Right. That's Rico. She that's going to demonstrate an application and scenarios involved alleged corruption within political and legal system. So who, she saying, thinks, who she thinks she is, Clarence Thomas? I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's who she thought she was. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> now, the, here's the thing. Now, a, a key element in RICO cases is the allegations of financial misconduct mm -hmm. as part of the illegal enterprise. And so in Trump's case, this might relate to the broader scheme of election interference, mm -hmm. whereas in Willis's hypothetical case, it could involve the alleged misuse of funds, which is direct. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You see? So, so it, it, they can't really say Trump took some money. So yeah. there is no financial thing in there. So how does this Rico case even stick? Her case is wishy washy The case she brought against Trump is weak. The case, the hypothetical case that Trump and the district attorney could bring against um, and the attorney general is elected. It's going to be much stronger because we can point out where the money went. You see what I'm saying? You paying your, uh, a significant sum of money 
to your man, right? Who has, and we all agree, the man has limited experience, okay? And then you turn around and receive personal benefits from those payments. Mm -hmm. And they, they haven't even pulled this man's receipts yet. We don't know if he bought us some gifts. Let me get to Brian. Let me tell you something, Brian. Right. You telling me, yo, little boo, them put down near seven hundred thousand dollars in your pocket, and you ain't bought no rings, things, or nothing. So, so come on, man. So they got the record. The, the they figured out yeah. the travel from the divorce yeah. records, which, like you yeah. said, that ain't everything. You know, you know that black man that went down to Zales and bought this girl a Thomas ring or something, man. You, you know, it. you know, what's the name of that Tiffany? She done got that Tiffany bracelet. Right. All that's gonna come out. So he out here mm -hmm. buying you Tiffany bracelets with 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 the, with the taxpayers' money. You understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, woo, man! Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you, baby. And so here's the thing: both of these cases would require demonstrating a pattern of racketeering activity. For Trump, mm -hmm. this involves actions related to election interference. But in this Willis case, if allegations were true it would involve a pattern of financial transactions right. and personal benefits that violate legal and ethical standards and they're they're they're, they're digging that they they bro something's gonna happen with this man oh absolutely you know what i'm saying something's gonna happen with this because it's too much of, all of that's out there already we already know it to be true yeah and it's too many legal proceedings it's too many subpoenas flying it's subpoenas flying here you get a subpoena you get a subpoena you get a subpoena Mm -hmm. Everybody getting the subpoenas. Mm -hmm. All the information's gonna come out, man. Uh, the other thing is, if Willis were to face a RICO charge based on the scenario that we talked about, it would involve allegations of abuse of power, conflict of interest, similar to how Trump's case in allegations is, is abusing uh, presidential power for personal gain. That's what they basically said he did. You need to find me. 6,000 votes. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. Uh, both cases, they delve into complex legal and financial relationships. We can agree to that. Trump's case involves electoral process and political maneuvering, while Willis's hypothetical case, although it's hypothetical, mm -hmm. it would involve scrutinizing professional relationships, financial transactions, and potential kickbacks. See, we back to the money again. It's easy yeah. to follow the money. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Uh, they got lots of law out there about doing stuff with money you shouldn't be doing with potential ethics violations. We ain't dug into that. Right. Aside from the criminal implications, both of these cases involve ethical violations, but Trump's not a lawyer. You see what I'm saying? Right. Willis, on the other hand, is a is a is a lawyer. You know how people always say, I'm gonna call the bar on you. Right. That's basically what happened. She got a one big public bar complaint. Right. On top of that, she's a prosecutor for the government, and they're trying to say she withheld uh, some evidence. Tell it, man. Tell her. Look, the last thing you want is is a doggone ethical complaint. You, you see, what I'm saying as an attorney, right. Right. you know, and people people send ethical complaints all the time, but this is a real one right here. This is this is too public. What are your thoughts on that, man? Tell these people about this subject. Man. Go ahead, buddy. I mean, the ethical the ethical side of it. Mm -hmm is what started this off mm. i believe you know with this improper relationship mm -hmm. and then that just lit the match it's like lighting one match and, and and putting it near the box and everything else has really uh trickled down from that because at first yeah. because at first you were seeing a lot of commentary saying well this has nothing to do well, they ain't got nothing to do. That's it's not, not a defense. That was a city defense. girl. That was a city girl defense, Brian. Somebody right. tried Look, city girl defense. Why worry about who I, me and my old friend? He's a friend. They got nothing to do with him. And I was actually convinced. I was like, you know, my first thought was, this is messed up. Y'all just ethically. picking on her. Y'all picking it's on up her. ethically. But mm -hmm. but then once I saw, I would I, the reason I sent you that letter. Once I read Mr. Clyde's letter, I was like, oh whoa whoa whoa. Mm -hmm. And then we mm -hmm. saw the part about the money. The money, yeah, that money Golden trips. I was like, uh oh, here we go. Oh, that they would, the bro, money. Bro, bro. Brian. Why would they do something that stupid? It's really, I, I, you know, we it's still playing out, but I'm Brian, you know, that's stupid, Brian. It's, it's stupid. Stupid. Brian, Brian, come on, Brian. You in the middle like of the horse, look, look, and you I, got your side chick, and y'all going to Napa Valley, and y'all going down the, the doggone uh, allegedly, y'all going to the Caribbean, man. Come on, Brian, who does that? 
I have to drive through Fulton County sometimes, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> bro, come on, ah, bro. <laughs> I know you're on no smoke. Hey, uh, you know, you know, that Brian Ponder, that right. Brian Ponder. Hey man, I heard somebody play. Speaking of which, yeah. I heard somebody played. Uh, yeah. Shake it for a simp for Umar Johnson. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Dang. Oh, man. Yeah, he but, said, there's a lawyer down in Houston coming for your head, Umar. Oh, my I'm like, yeah, you know. I... <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, man, yeah, this is, this is, hey, bro, you got a long, you got a big reach over here on the internet, man, even though uh, I only got $65,000, uh, 65000 Oh, it looked like everybody be watching my channel every time I go play. Hey, you Uncle D. Oh, well, right, I right, need right. more followers then. You know what I'm saying? Most of the right. I did. Look, look, I got six super chats. I'm gonna show you something, Brian. Look, look Come at on, that. Man. Where's look the guy? Come on, super chats. One Urban Eagle, shout out to you. Mark the freelancer, super sticker, three dollars, five dollars. Just that. that's you. So we can't yeah. count that one, Brian. Yeah. They ain't real. We got, we got four super chats. And look, subscribe. Everybody should be a subscriber. Yeah, just, member. Subscribe. Like, yeah, Brandon Jackson, 1990. Shout out to you, bro. Thanks for the great. Awesome. I appreciate you. Appreciate me, man. Awesome. Uh, anyway, this is the Boss B. It's ultimate form. Yeah, that's it. This is that final Boss B on the on the, uh, on the the video game. Yeah. That's, that's who she is, and you see her failing. But anyway, yeah, man, y'all hit the number one button, man. Show your appreciation. But yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so, Dennis, go we're, we're going to have to come back and talk about this. She has mm -hmm. a hearing, you know, that that she has a hearing coming up on the. Yeah. What, uh, is it Friday? What's the second? Friday. Friday? Is that Friday? I may, I may try to go to that hearing, but she has a hearing. No. You should go, Brian. Yeah. She has a hearing before the criminal judge. To Ooh. respond to these Ooh. allegations, so I may try to uh, get down there uh, and, and, and see that. But yeah, so we're gonna have to uh, talk about this and see how that goes and see how she explains it. Oh, my yeah. guess, Dennis. I, yeah. My here's my guess. You give me your guess. My guess is her response is not going to be on point to the allegations. She's gonna she's gonna say. Let me has tell nothing you. to do with anything, bro. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you what she should do. I want y'all to look, Fanny. Where's hold on? Let's hold on. Let's find it. Miss Williams, hold on, hold on, hold on. Get in tight. <laughs> you gonna pray for him? Well, bow your head, everybody. Please, please bow your heads, everybody. <laughs> Dear Fanny, Lord Jesus, we we. We come to you as humble servants of the law, Lord, as officers of the court. And we ask, we ask, Father, that Fani, Fani Willis of Inglewood, California, come to a census, Jesus. We ask that she give up that city girl lifestyle, Lord, and yes. come on home, Jesus. Come on home, Lord. You didn't been out there too long in the cold. You by yourself now, girl, with the wolves and they, they're baying in the moonlight. They're coming for you. And you need to come on home to Inglewood, baby girl. Come on home. It's, Atlanta's too hot for you now. You need to come on back. Praise God. That's right. Praise God. Please, please hear this message, Fanny. Hear this message. When I tell you that as a legal mind myself who's been voted into the Hall of Fame, Lord, thank God. Thank God. The Hall of Fame yes, at sir. the Southern University Law Center. My best advice to you, Jesus, is do not, praise God, do not stand in front of that judge and testify lord because that testimony praise god that testimony don't perjure yourself hallelujah no perjury hmm. that testimony will be used against your black behind all the way through the georgia senate all the way up to the president of the united states mr donald trump when he gets elected and they're gonna roast you like a dirty chitlin that just fell off of the pig truck you understand me we don't want that to happen lord hallelujah hallelujah Woo, yes. So yeah, Amen. man. Look, one thing I tell my clients, if you're gonna settle, just settle before the deposition. Because see, that's what got Cosby. Somebody talk, say got Cosby in the chat room. You hear me? Don't wait too late. Deposition, that testimony. That the, the, the everybody in the, say testimony. You want to go to church? Let's talk about testimony. That testimony is gonna be something that she can't undo. You're gonna say one thing to this judge mm -hmm. on TV. And then you're going to go in front of the Georgia Senate and say another thing. And then you're going to go in front of the federal folk and say another thing. 
And then you might have to testify in the divorce court and say another thing. Mm. It's some perjury that's going to happen between them for a sworn testimony, Brian. Mm, mm, mm. And yeah. she, she, she needs to retire right now in lieu of prosecuting this case. Look, she she gonna blame the black man anyway. Go on, throw him up under the bus like mm-hmm. you planned, cause you know she gonna throw him under the bus. Yeah, you know what I mean. She gonna well, throw. What's his I, didn't, name? I didn't tell him to. Yeah, I didn't tell him to. Yeah, what? I ain't tell him to. Pad those out, pad his hours. I didn't. I, he, I ain't tell him to put that old Inglewood the uh, the VJ on me like that. Uh, the one. Uh, uh, they gonna be up in the ass and that girl. What kind of positions they do and all kind of sexual stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Your your guess on whether they have met met up since these things have popped off? I, I I predict not. You think what you gonna say? I said your guess as to whether they've met up any, hooked up any since this is all. Bro, oh oh since oh since it started. Yeah, I would think no. Everybody's watching. Come on, bro. I the bet they did. I bet they did. <sighs> is that city girl logic? Mm. Who gonna check me, boo? I bet they have hooked up. Because in her mind, ain't nothing wrong with what we've been doing. We're just friends. So, of course, I'm going to hook up with you. This is city girl logic we're dealing with. Brian, this is boss chick logic. You so, can't tell a boss chick nothing, Brian. So Brian, Usher, these boss chicks do what they want to do. So, Usher got the lovers and friends going on in Vegas, and, and, and Danny and Wade had it going on in Atlanta, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, this is this city girl logic is a mother sucker, man. But anyway, uh, look. Okay, yeah, no. Man, what are your closing thoughts on this thing, bro? Talk to me. Uh, you... My closing yeah. thoughts are we, we're going to be back. I think this is we, we're we we're in the infancy of this, and this is going to turn into something way bigger, mm-hmm. way bigger than we're talking about. I think yeah. we're I think we're seeing just the uh, tip of the iceberg, and this, this is very serious. And I, I don't think people really realize how serious this is. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, it's, it's what's going on against the president is the history books. We don't have... We're in history. This is this is history book stuff we're seeing. Yeah. This this indictment and what's going on. And then you have a multi-indicted person, ex-president, about to perhaps become president again. And then you have this DA prosecution. This is this is you remember your history books? You had, you yeah. had the little pictures and things. This is yeah. what we're seeing it. So mm-hmm. Y'all need to tune in, keep tuning in to Dennis because yeah, he's yeah. sort of predicting this, and uh, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have to come back and talk about the tra- what transpires uh, uh, recently. But yeah, her yeah. image is scarred. I mean, I don't oh, think it's, it's she, yeah. she, she, she 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 may not practice anymore. I think this no. is going to uh, this is going to be like some of Trump's former lawyers. You got to keep in mind what she's doing. You know, Michael Cohen, Trump's former lawyer, yeah. that got disbarred. He went to jail, right? I yeah, believe. yeah. This is far worse. Oh, yeah, much worse. You're in a position of, you don't understand. She has the highest legal position of, I would say, in Georgia. I understand we have an attorney general, Mm -hmm. but she does more prosecution. So this is way more. So I think think she's probably sacrificed her law license, perhaps her liberty. I think we're looking at perhaps jail time. Her reputation. Yeah, because there's so much money involved. I can imagine if it gets to a criminal situation and prosecution whether it's rico or, or misuse of federal funds so i can imagine it's going to be a significant uh thing she might have to do all the things <laughs> oh my gosh but anyway uh yeah that's that's, that's really all i had did say man. i appreciate yeah. you i appreciate it bro man but this yeah. is what happened when you get too big for your britches that's what happened no, you yeah. why are you jumping you jumping that tank full of them lions and mm. i hate to say i hate to make it seem like that but but Brian, I mean, we we know what we are. We live in America. Yes. Yeah, and I'm not one of these people that lies to people and tell them that, uh, you know, America is the same. America has always been. Racism is always going to be part of this country. You just can't let it hold you back. You see what I mean? Yeah, they right. don't have to like me as long as I can take care of my family and they're not in my face disrespecting me with it and I'm making strides for it. It's always going to be racism is going to be part of the country. But recognize where you are. That's like you going to a, I don't know, you going to a country and Western festival mm-hmm. and picking a fight with somebody up in there that, that's real popular. Right. And you surround it. Right. You see what I mean? And it's like, nah, that ain't how you do it. And on top of that, to allow yourself to get used like that. That's my problem. Brian, how naive are these black lawyers? You and I are both black lawyers. And this is what I want them to understand. I don't need to be liked by white folks that much. 
You know what I'm saying? I went to a black college, live in a black neighborhood, went to an HBCU. My ex-wife is from the Ninth Ward. My baby mama from Kingston, Jamaica. And my, and my fiance is from the Dominican Republic. I don't run after white folk like that. I don't need to be a plea to please them like that. But if you one of these black folk that feel the need to please white folk, like and, and go so far as to throw yourself under the bus and be the attack, attack dog and be the sacrificial dog, a uh, 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 lamb for this pie in the sky, they promise you after you done worked all these years and pulled yourself up by the bootstraps, mm-hmm. you know, and got to these lofty positions and then just allow yourself to be you just a, you just like a street, a two dollar street walker, then to them. She's you been know used. what I mean? She's been <laughs> used, but again, it's not, it's voluntarily though, you know, if she's not someone off the street she's a very intelligent person she's been working in that office for years but she ain't that intelligent if she paid her her boo six hundred fifty thousand dollars to to be the prosecutor and he don't have no experience and then turn around and had him throwing money back to her so they can go on vacation she ain't that look look. that's that's that's, 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 you remember might be book smart but she yeah that's what i'm about to say you remember your grandparents used to say you look smart but you don't at the same time some of y'all may not remember this, but you remember when the old folk used to say they books yeah. smart but dumb? That 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 was that's what we're dealing with here because that's yeah. really dumb because all this stuff <laughs> certainly was gonna come to light. You think you didn't think the president who plays yeah, dirty? I think what you know this is a this, look, bro. And I know the lovely ladies hate when I talk mm-hmm. about them, but you know, ladies, I want you sisters to listen to me. I know y'all mad at me. Y'all don't like the stuff I say, but I'm telling you what's happening. I told y'all two or three years ago. Y'all going to be the face. Y'all going to be America's enemy number one. And guess what? They putting you in jail in droves. They, 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 the police is whooping on you just like they was whooping on us. Right. Uh, you know, you got in positions of power. They target you. Look at Marilyn Mosby. Look at this girl, Fonnie Woods. Look at all the black women they're mm-hmm. dragging down. Even that one black girl who's in Congress, they dragging her. I'm telling y'all, I see it. This is how this system works. Y'all don't have to like me. Right. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. That's why they call me Uncle D. I'm going to sit in my rocking chair under the tree and say, you better get your black behind from over there. Mess with them folk. They're going to light you up. And you don't like it because what I say come true. But see, right. here's the thing. She been getting away with stuff like this, Brian. This ain't the first time she done did something like this. That's that city girl mentality. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's like when your, your girl call the police on you because she want to win an argument. She done did that to her baby daddy. You see what I mean? Right. She been doing that. She's seen the mama do that. This is a pattern of behavior. You see what right. I mean? This is what is going on. And this is the problem with these lovely ladies these days. They, they, whether they are, uh, uh, whether they are str- uh, uh, on the street working at Walmart or whether they are prosecutor in the biggest County in Georgia, they still got that same mentality of entitlement, the same mentality. Can't nobody tell me that that who, who gonna check me boo mentality? And then when they get checked, get put in jail, now they wanna come crying and start, I'm black, I'm being persecuted, I'm black. No, you being persecuted because your head got too big and you wouldn't listen. That's what happened. You understand me? That's, That's right. what happened, bro. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. I'm gonna let you finish. Go and ahead, uh, I'm finished, but I was gonna I mm-hmm. sent you some information. Um, I actually litigated a case back in 2016. This is after. Uh-huh. Now, Dennis got me to the federal court system uh, early in my career, but I actually uh, litigated a case against Trump mm. and um, dealt with him and Michael Cohen. My client was a website. Uh, he bought, you know, bought websites and sold them. Yeah. And one of his websites was uh, Trump Estates. Oh, so okay. I had a case against them. But yeah, so I'm, I'm familiar. But they, you know, Trump is a, you know, they, they fight. Yeah, they fight, and, and they and I mean, this is a case about regarding a website, and I swear, we had documents. I That's mean, they take it, they, they, they fight hard on everything. So, for her to think that this was going to go through without her being scratched, yeah, man. If she but that perfect. Yeah. The, but the thing is, Brian, that's the lesson that they should have learned from the O.J. Simpson prosecution. See, let me tell y'all something. I want y'all to listen to me very carefully. Y'all hit the number one button. Let me tell you about these. And I learned this about government workers a long time ago. They used to go on home at five. 
Mm. See, when you're in private practice, you eat what you kill. Somebody type eat what you kill in the chat room. When you're in private practice, you eat what you kill. Mm -hmm. It's nothing for me to stay up to two or three o'clock in the morning working on a brief. Those folks are not over in that district attorney's office at two or three o'clock in the morning because yeah. they check is coming out the same machine every two weeks, no mm -hmm. matter how much work they do. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, because of that, they really don't have that motivation. They don't have have that extra kill spirit in them to go ahead and bring this thing down. Mm -hmm. And so when they are confronted with a group of lawyers who are highly motivated and will fight them tooth and nail, they really are outmatched. Oh, and absolutely. That's what happened in the O.J. Simpson case. And now they see what's happening now. All of these state prosecutors, they getting they getting lit up over there. You don't have enough money to fight a billionaire. You you five, you, yeah, you hit right on the head. Yeah. I understand you got many prosecutors and they have mm -hmm. three special ones, mm -hmm. but Trump has an army. Yeah, these other people have an army. They're not gonna go out like that. They're they're working on this case right now, mm -hmm. as we speak. So yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, hey, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I I actually talk about that in my book, man. There was this case. I was back in New Orleans. I was a young lawyer, and you know, I and uh, he had gotten an accident, but he'd been out of work for a while. So he was his, his, his case was in arrearages. And so basically they sent the district attorney from down on Broad Street, which is where the criminal courthouse is, to come down to the civil courthouse and try to enforce this man's child support. They were trying to take his license. And my thing was, if they take your driver's license and you can't drive these trucks, and you're going to be around here talking about, I can't push this case for because I can't go to treatment and I can't do these sort of things. So that was taking money out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. So, of course, even though I didn't want to, I had to run down there to family court and try to help this man keep his dry, his trucking dry, dry, trucking license. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so uh, so we could proceed forward with the case. Long story short, I realized at that point that this district attorney, actually a guy who graduated two years before me at Southern, he was a DA, arrogant dude, black dude, arrogant. But I'm like, dog, this is my house. This is a civil court. Mm -hmm. you, you, you from down there, you from the criminal court. So what did I do? Mm -hmm. Once he got served, I filed a motion for summary judgment. I served him at his office mm -hmm. on, on behalf of the state. He didn't answer. Mm -hmm. You don't answer. You show up to court talking about, uh, I was supposed to answer this 14 days before the trial. Yeah, that's uh -huh. what the civil procedures say. Too and much. this courthouse is a court of civil procedure. This ain't the federal, this is not the, the criminal court. And so I realized then them people go home at five, man, 445, they down there at the local bar with their little shiny briefcases having a drink. You see what I mean? And the rest of us lawyers who eat what we kill, the lawyers in private practice, we still on the hunt. And so he, he they outmatched. And that's why the thing is, man, a lot of the prosecutors that they have if you go work at a DA's office, typically you fresh out of law school. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Typically you, uh, you, you know, if you could make real money, you would. You understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You're not going to be 20 years as a district attorney unless you are the district attorney. Or you're not right. going to be, you're going to go into private practice and make some real money because you don't, they ain't making no money like that. No. You see, and, and what does that mean? That means the best of us are in private practice. And the rookies start off, that's when you cut your teeth. So, yeah, I've dealt with that mentality before. They just outmatched. And now what's happening, she's not used to this kind of fight. This is one of those, this ain't no bam, 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 bam. Mm -hmm. This bam. They coming from the back. They trying mm -hmm. to beat my legs. I'm getting hit with low kicks. You see what I mean? They, they coming from everywhere on it because you pick the fight with somebody. It's like picking a fight with an octopus. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You get slapped from every direction. Right, right, right. Yes, Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I I agree. To say she's in over her head is an understatement. That's what this is. This is a this is a this is a a sacrificial case. And what I wanted to say a little bit earlier, I think with the Rico charge that you mentioned, mm -hmm. she sort of dug her own. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say ditch. I don't want yeah. You said the wrong word, she, but she funny. she dug her own ditch in this case against herself. She wanted. She played this Rico suing rapper. Yeah, Rico is yeah, man. Now she's found herself in, 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 a, in a situation where she may be subject to that type of uh, yeah. Them little them case. little rapper them little rapper lawyers them little lawyers them rappers can afford. They ain't they ain't got no money. They ain't mm -hmm. really 
you mm-hmm. dealing with the elite of the elite. First of all, you fight, you're trying to prosecute somebody who made Rico famous. Right. And the people on the other side actually wrote the Rico statute. Mm-hmm. So even if you was to get a, a win in state court, by the time it gets up to the Supreme Court, they're going to nullify it anyway. Right. What they were trying to do is get this case over and done with mm-hmm. before November so that they could get a prosecution and say, well, Trump's been and he's been prosecuted. He's a felon. They right. want to be able to have that talking point. Yes, all of this is falling apart. All of this crap is all of these. Look, man, you ain't got to like Trump. Go vote for Bush. Uh, go vote for somebody else then. Right, right. But if we're going to start having our elections based on legal cases, man, we'll never have elections because, I mean, I can tie a case up for three or four years. That's right. what lawyers do. If you want right. to delay it, we can delay it. So I don't like it. I don't like the idea. I, look, however you feel about these pro- politicians, I don't like the idea of having the judiciary Trump, and I use the word Trump, Trump, our political system. I don't like that, man. I didn't like mm-hmm. it in 2000 and Bush v. Gore, and I don't like it now. It sets a bad precedent. Bro, I'm going to give you the last word before I open up the door and let these folks come in. Oh, I agree with you, Dennis. You know, mm-hmm. I have nothing else on this, but I'll, I'm mm-hmm. sure I'll be seeing you again on this issue. Oh, yeah, we're going to chop it up on this. Y'all big shout out to Brian Ponder. Thanks, bro. All right, all right, all right. So we back at it, man. We still got some time up in here. I want to get my regular crew up in here to talk about these this whole hot mess that's going on. But look, ladies and gentlemen, all y'all up in here, I want y'all to listen to me, man. You know, there's several critical lessons that we can draw from unfolding this unfolding saga surrounding Fulton County District Attorney Bonnie Willis, okay? Um, It's essential, though, that we reflect on these lessons not just as observers, but as individuals navigating our personal and professional lives. Listen to me here, okay? Because this whole situation, if somebody, this could have been avoided, if somebody could have kept their pee away from somebody else's pee. (laughs) You understand? And I'm not talking about urine, okay? We need to keep these P's and these P's separate, especially if you're working together. You understand? Because that's really what happened. First and foremost, we must underscore the importance of maintaining professional boundaries, especially when it comes to relationships in the workplace. Did I tell you that Wade is married? Huh? Did I tell you that? That's the first thing about that makes her scandalous. And you, the district attorney, you supposed to uphold the law. I don't know. It's not illegal anymore to cheat with a married man, but damn, it's got to be immoral. Right. The central issue that has cast a shadow over Fannie Willis's career and potentially jeopardize her future is her alleged involvement in a romantic relationship with a married co-worker, special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, that she ele- that allegedly that she's having a relationship with, that she appointed. And this situation serves as a stark reminder of the potential consequences that can arise from such entanglement. Somebody type entanglement in the chat room. Huh? One one vital lesson is the need for ethical conduct and integrity in our professional lives. The allegations of conflicts of interest and misuse of public funds, and in this case, it you know emphasizes the significance of upholding the highest ethical standards in our roles, especially if you're in public office, but also if you're in private. Can't be around there doing all that stuff. Trust and integrity are precious, precious commodities that must be preserved at all costs. Moreover, we have to acknowledge the importance of accountability and transparency. When individuals in positions of authority face allegations of misconduct or ethical breaches, it's imperative that they're held accountable through the proper channels. The investigative process and the legal proceedings that have been initiated 
in this case against Fanny, hot girl Willis, illustrate the commitment to the upholding the accountability in our justice system. At least that's what they saying uh, in public. But really what this is, is catchback. Somebody type catchback in the chat room. That's what this really is. You want to prosecute our guy? We're going to prosecute you. You see what I'm saying? These personal choices. Somebody type personal choices in the chat room. These personal choices can impact our career and our reputation, as well as the institutions we serve. It's some valuable lessons we can learn from Fannie Willis. Maintaining professional boundaries, upholding ethical conduct, embracing accountability. And you know, accountability is what? The modern woman's kryptonite. She's not used to being held accountable. And we also need to recognize the impact of our actions on our careers and organizations we are part of. Why would you be dealing with a married man and you got the eyes of the world on you? Fellas, avoid married co-workers. Even if the broad says she got a boyfriend, leave her alone. I tell you brothers all the time, don't cheat. Had Wade paid attention to me and not cheated, he'd been fine. You in a divorce, get your divorce finalized before you start messing around. Because it could affect your reputation, your career, and as in this case, your freedom. And that's what we're dealing with. And this is real business. But anyway, we got some guys down here in the chat room. What we're going to do right quick is uh, we're going to run a quick little commercial situation, get this situation popping. Let's lighten it up a little bit, man. We're going to lighten it up a little bit, man. I want to I wanna bring the... Bring, bring the uh, Bring the happiness back into our channel over here, man. So I'm going to do something to make y'all smile. Shout out to my man out there. All the brothers out there. We win it. You understand what I'm saying? Hate me all you want to, baby. I don't mind hating me. Hate. Hate all you can. Let me go the other way. Hate. Hate. Hate all you can. Hate. Hate everything. But I'm going to still make you look good. Black men winning. Okay? Come on. Somebody type that in the chat room. Black men winning. Okay, because that's just what's happening. We are winning. We win it. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We win it. We win it. We win it. I know they hating out here. Yeah. I know they mad. They all in their feelings. But baby, I don't care. She calling the police on me and everything. Yeah. Somebody need to get on the phone, call my attorney. Turn it. Dealing with these hard headed hoes who ain't learning. Learning. She acting all ignorant like a motherfucking menace. She better bundle luck, cause bitches about to be winner. Uh. Niggas acting timid, why you think she treat a nigga so bad? Turn her only fucking son into a killer. Can't even distinguish who the women, who the bitches. Yeah. She broke my nigga, even Jesus can't fix it. Woo. Now my whole nigga got a man up in prison. But quick to tell you, get your back. Bag up, bitch, quit it. Ever heard of Dennis? Yes, sir. Get you spurling. We in court early, early. Don't be acting all girly. Keep that same energy. Don't need any men. You the man. You the father. You the face of many men. Yep. Many ripple pin. Taking L's your whole life. While the passport pros taking off the next flight. Some thick, some feminine. Rubbing on my shoulders. Be a cold day in hell. Blizzard King try to tell you. A new world is coming, bitch. You better stop sinning. See, God took Kevin. Left your Sorry, ass with Dennis. Somebody type old broad in the chat room. Talking about men, you can't find them. That just means you had your chance, boo. You had your chance. And your chance has passed you by. Your husband done went on to the great beyond. Ha! Ah, he's not there looking for you no more. Ha! Ah, you done hit one wall. Ha! Ah, ha! Somebody type one wall in the chat room. Ha! Ah, you done hit two walls. Ha ha! Somebody say three walls. Yeah. Oh man, welcome back to the broadcast. Look, man, y'all gonna have to get these uh super chats up. We got seven super chats. I'ma need at least at least give me ten. Damn, man. 
at least I ain't got no cash apps. Y'all were cold up in here. But anyway, man, welcome, welcome, welcome. We got Cody and Glow Hardy up in here. Y'all need to, they need to pay me for my time. You need to talk to these people about something. I got special guests coming in. And we talking about this hot girl. We talking about hot girl, city girl logic tonight, man. I need you brothers as lay people, as regular folk who are not lawyers. I want y'all to sit back and put y'all antennas on, okay? And 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 put them up into the sky and tell me how this lawyer mess looks to you as a public person looking at how your legal system that you pay for, these tax dollars that you pay, how does this hit you? Go ahead, bro. Let's hear it. Go ahead. I go, um, it, I just I, I think we're just witnessing another Kamala Harris, you know what I'm saying? Like, except mm -hmm. for you know, this ain't the vice president, this a you this a lawyer, you know what I'm saying? She <laughs> she has like the she has the sword of justice in her hand and she gets to swing it around as she sees fit when it comes to like criminal prosecution. Mm -hmm. And it's like you you, you I don't think that she has any allies. I mean, you already fighting against like, you know, one of the biggest rap groups in history and current in modern time. And mm -hmm. then you you taking shots at, 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 at Big Donald. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just like but I mean getting back to the city girl logic is just you you know, like they, they get their hair big, you know, they feel like they're 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 beyond report. They I mean they're like you said, they they grow up being beyond reproach you know what i'm saying they 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 get coddled they don't get held accountable and, and and stuff like this happens and and you know if you're if you're constantly going through being beyond rep beyond reproach mm -hmm. then you you're not you're not gonna feel the effects that a normal person would would feel if they were to be held accountable so it kind of creates a it, it it creates a narcissism about them you know i'm untouchable you know what i'm saying and you can't your morals you you don't really grow you don't really grow with a moral backbone you know what i'm saying it's, mm -hmm. it's just kind of disappointing especially since like i think black people collectively want even though like the 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 spotlight is on black men getting their image together it right now but you know the opposite is true for black women in my opinion that's mm -hmm. what I, I i think that they just keep on they're they're being self-sabotaging but i don't think that is purposeful though i think that they we've we've coddled them in every every way so much to the point where like now it's it's like you know you drop down in a hole and you're you're looking around you and you you're like oh I'm in a dark place. No, you've been in a dark place for a minute. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? You've been in a dark place for a minute, you know? And now it's like you can either turn the light the light on or you're just going to continue to, or that place is going to get darker, you know? All right. Yeah, brother. I appreciate that. Cody, what do you think? Well, <clears throat> I remember what Kevin Samuel said about uh, uh, to us about Penis discipline, mm -hmm. and and how it affects our image overall mm -hmm. as black men. Yeah, and if we don't have that lack of discipline. That we don't have that discipline, and we have that lack of discipline. It's and gonna. I'm not, yeah, I'm, up, yeah, I'm not letting the brother off head. either. He, I'm not letting the brother off either, man. But go ahead. I'm glad you you brought that up. Go ahead. Go ahead. And. That also does not include certain women in power as well. I understand that certain women have, they're giving women the opportunity to, to get these positions. However, that doesn't make them invincible. Like, look what's going on with uh, the lady in, in Dalton, Illinois, and, and, and the mayor yeah, here in New Orleans. And, it's, and it brought, it, it, the, basically, they went from city girls on the street and somebody elected them politicians, and they because they're not used to somebody checking them and telling them they're wrong. This is who you have leading you right now. This is this is my whole point. At the point where you see all of these black women who reach these lofty positions of power, and they are failing themselves because of poor judgment, they are failing themselves and getting themselves in trouble politically, financially. Uh, criminally, that tells you about the mentality that they have. This is what I want you to understand.
Because see, that same woman that you sit in class with or you, that's, that's working at the Walmart with you has the same mentality because they have the same culture. It's that city girl logic. I can do no wrong. I'm never at fault. And, it, and, and if, if something bad happens, it's always somebody else's fault and nobody's going to check me. And now what you see happening is because they have taken on this. And look, I told y'all these lovely ladies were going to become public enemy number one. I told you guys that. I can see it coming. I know the society that we live in. I know how racist it is. And white folk will not. As a matter of fact, who? Dr. Francis Press Wilson said it. And if you listen to her, she said these people are not to be ruled. And when you have black women who are in ruling positions, look how much they hated Barack Obama. And at least he was a man. But because he was a black man, he was targeted. You see what I mean? And so now you got all these black American women who are in these positions of power. You can't tell them nothing, so you can't guide them through this, this slalom. You see what I mean? And now you got one who decides it's a good idea to indict 19 of the most powerful white folks in Georgia, including the president of the United States. I knew then that wasn't going to work out well because they're already a target. Anyway, my man, Anthony, welcome to the broadcast. Bro. What would you like to add to the conversation? Well, uh, I think that she really didn't have a choice because uh, her handlers basically told her to get down and lay down. Mm. Um, oh, you yeah, know. Oh, yeah, all day. It's like, um, look, this is what you're going to do. You know, you're going to do X, Y, and Z. You're gonna, that's why I was so sloppy, you know, to, to begin with. But if mm -hmm. you don't do it, then, you know, you, you're not going to get elected to office. And then, you know, we just might do this to you because, you know, we know this about you. You know, because why else would somebody, you know, do something, you know, just so brazen? It just oh, doesn't you, make you, sense. Here's, I know it don't make sense. That's city girl logic. That's what I'm yeah, trying to yeah. tell you. You trying to use man logic. Mm -hmm. And you try to use it on City Girl. She did it because she did it for the clout. She did it for the for the gram. No doubt. But what about the, what about your boy? Say again. I, the black uh, the black guy in New York. What's his name? Alvin Bragg. Alvin Bragg. He yeah. he trying to be famous. He trying to be a good pet Negro. I, I think they told him to get down and lay down. It's like, look, this now, is what y'all about think, to do. I think these Negroes love white folks so much and want to appease the Democrat Party so much. They was happy to jump out there and take that take that spear to the chest. Hmm, That's what they, this is what they want. I know black people like this. I'm hmm. telling you, I know. Matter of fact, a lot of those black professionals, when they go to those schools, they always have to prove themselves. Yeah. They constantly find themselves having to prove themselves. And yeah. you think these folks to go to Harvard and Yale are the best of us? Look, some of them are great. But if you go up there and you lose your black identity and who you are and you feel like you got to prove yourself to white folk, they're going to make you prove yourself. Yeah, so all day. I never yeah, all feel... go, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Well, well, that's what I was just about to say when, with them making them prove themselves. Mm -hmm. That's to get down and lay down, you know. And this is, not, this is not nothing new. Check this out because when, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you can just Google it. It was a guy who was a uh, Newark, New Jersey back in the day. His name was Sharp James, okay? Mm -hmm. They did this to him first. Because they couldn't beat him in the election, so what they did is just locked him up, and that's how Cory Booker got in the office. Okay. Yeah, but, right. but see, these folks, these mm -hmm. folks, violent. They might make promises. Yeah, you know, there's there's gonna be pie in the sky for you at the end. Right. I mean, but at the end of the day, man, these people volunteered. I'm. Mean, it's look, man. I wrote this in the song. It's Negroes lined up to sell out. Yeah, they lined up to sell out, man. They are lined up. This black folk. Black Americans, I know I love y'all. I love y'all. My foundational black American brother, I love y'all. But we some of the biggest house Negroes on the planet. Because mm -hmm. we lined up to sell out. We can't wait to sell out. We want our, our Levi blue jeans and our Coca-Colas and our Mercedes Benzes and our white women and to live in the white neighborhood with the gate around it and get that little coffee latte from uh, 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 Starbucks. 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 Uh, with the coffee bean. We can't wait to sell out. We can't wait to get a contract and get on the team. We can't wait to get on the white man's show and put on a dress and a big clown and be buffoons. We're the biggest sellouts on the planet. I know y'all hate to hear it, but look at you. You got a man that graduated from Harvard undergrad and law school, and you are bringing the most frivolous lawsuit, i.e. Uh, Alvin Bragg, against the president I've ever seen before. 
Thank so you, this, Patricia so James, this, bringing one so of the this, frivolous criminal indictments under RICO mm -hmm. that I've ever seen before. True back. So let's walk it back. So mm -hmm. you know what would they have to gain outside of just like you know I got a name now. Uh, I, they, I, 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 a position in the White House, clout. Mm -hmm. Stuff that Negroes like, you know, gold chains, watermelons, Cadillacs, big rims, you know, stuff that black people like. You ain't got to give them nothing. Mm -hmm. Just give them some clout. Negroes like to be famous. They like to be on TV. They like to shine. That's why they call their shines. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's what they want. You ain't got to give them nothing. Tell you know what? If you want Negroes to vote for you, go ahead and have you a fish fry down here in South Carolina, and all the Negroes will show up and they'll get your vote like that. We we. We don't ask for much. We happy to serve mouth. You yeah, come with, yeah, go, yeah, go to go to the church, make an appearance at the church, you know. Go on to church, yeah, and tell them that you know what, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. You know what I'm saying? And oh yeah, yeah. You, that's all. We don't take much. I don't want to Don't forget them, them finger sandwiches. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, Cody. He said, don't forget them, them finger sandwiches too, man. The chicken sandwiches. Oh man! Did y'all did y'all see Biden uh, show up? Did y'all see Biden show up to uh, that that random black family's house and he was like acting real awkward? Y'all seen that? And he ordered out. They ordered some fast food. Ordered some chicken and hot sauce. You don't cut it out. Look, like, where man. did you find these random this this random yeah. family of black people? Uh, where did you find them? The little boy invited him over and he decided to come just to take pictures. Look, I see I like Negroes too. Look, I like <laughs> look, man. Let me tell you something, man. Y'all come too cheap, man. Y'all too cheap. Y'all easy to please. Y'all. But see, here's my problem. And this is my fundamental problem. As an attorney, I know how long it took me to get to where I am. No doubt. All the late nights of studying and, and coming up through the hood and trying not to get shot and banged on and you know and, and holding on to my license for the last 24 years. And I would never just throw my ability to take care of my children and all that hard work and all those professors and all those people. I'm not gonna throw that away to try to uh, make some white folk like me. You know what I'm saying? But you y'all want to be liked too much. Y'all do, y'all try so hard. To be liked by people that probably ain't gonna really like you like that. Not as a group, you might have some individual friends. I got some white folks I'm cool with. They mm -hmm. might like you. you know what I'm saying? But I don't need all white people to like, I don't need all you black folks to like me. I like myself most of the time. You see what I'm yeah. saying? And so, and 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 I think God likes me. You see what I mean? And as long as as long as y'all got that low self-esteem, as long as black folk got that low self-esteem, you could be the queen, you could be the king of the Congo. You could be the king of the Congo, but because you want and, and have studied in the universities of Portugal and come back to your Congolese nation and you sitting on a throne and the first white man that comes along with a horse and, a, and, and, and some pots and a pan and give you a little go, you willing to sell all your people to go overseas to be slaves for the next 500 years. That's you, that's you black folk, that's y'all. That's y'all right there. That's y'all, that's how much y'all want to be loved by white. What we see going on right now is just another example of a Negro, a negress, negress, okay? And the other ones in it too, wanting to please white folk. That's all you see right now. This is what I see. See, this is the bigger picture that I want. This girl done got herself and all, you done pull yourself from Inglewood. And hey, look, I don't know if y'all been to Inglewood. Inglewood ain't really nowhere you want to They got an Inglewood in my city, you feel what I'm saying? I'm talking about Inglewood, California. <laughs> you hang out with them, with them families and them treetops and all that, you get shot and stabbed over there. You see what I'm saying? You pull yourself up through that, you got to these lofty position and you just throw it all away because you're going to be an attack dog. No, <laughs> man. Yeah, floor is open. Talk, say what you're going to say. I need two more super chats. Keep going. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I'm this not gonna lie. I um, it's like I it kind of like how we're talking about the left using black people as attack dogs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It just really blows my mind when I say I rock with Trump because Trump rock with black people. He really do. In my in my in my humble opinion, no, I, look, I the don't dude, that white man either, brother. I'm let me tell you. Dang. Look, let me I, tell you something. Let me tell you. Me, I, he I, got nine hundred fifty billion dollars going to oh, HBCUs I, I, and Biden repealed that, that. That's great, and I appreciate that for him. But what I'm trying to explain, you, brother, vote your interest. When it comes to politicians, just vote your interest. It's not. It don't need to be an emotional decision. 
this dude is gonna make sure these migrants go home. This yep. dude is giving a little money to the to the to the to the black folks at the HBCUs. Most black folks ain't going to college. You see what I'm saying? But for those of us who do go to college, thank you, Mr. Trump. This man has signed some documentation and some laws to help black folks have a second chance to get out of prison. That's cool. This man is going to make sure that we not at war. He's going to make sure because that's what he did last time. And so them three black folks that got killed over in Jordan, we know that's going to happen. Because we all represented in the military. You see what I'm saying? It's still going to be stuff that we don't like that he do. My whole point is, fam, just vote your interest. But most importantly, man, uh, just don't get caught up in all this. Never forget who you are. I'm a, I'm a Baptist. I love Jesus. I love the Lord. I read my Bible. But I've also read the Holy Quran. And the, Holy, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, and one of the, one of the, uh, the, the uh, passages, it explains to his followers that if you're in a land and they don't like Muslims and they'll kill you for praying, don't pray right then. Be smart. It, it's, it, I, I'm paraphrasing. And so if you know that you in Georgia, and you a black girl and you in Georgia and you surrounded by folk that's probably one generation away from, uh, you know, having a Confederate flag on the pickup truck, then, you know, it might be a good idea not to go down there picking fights with folk. You see what I'm saying? It's just really, it's at some point, stay in your lane. That's all I'm saying. And if you got some other folk coming on, bucking you up, yeah, go on out there, go on out there, do this for me. They promising you pie, pie in the sky. I mean, anybody with some basic street smarts to tell you, nah, I'm going ahead and pass on that. You see what I'm saying, fellas? But, man, don't get to these. This is my problem. It hurts my heart. You got these black folks who strive and strive. Are you just willing to throw it all away just to be somebody's attack dog? Go ahead. The floor is open. So I heard that um, Biden is supposed to get sick and Michelle Obama is supposed to be the Democratic nominee. Now, if she does that and she actually get elected, do you think that she will hold them down and make sure they not get prosecuted or whatever? I can absolutely tell you that if Michelle Obama becomes the vice presidential uh, uh, a candidate, mm-hmm. uh, uh, is she going to be president? You say he's yeah. going to Yeah, president, yeah. She is absolutely not going to win. I can tell you beyond a shadow of doubt, the vast majority of these black dudes on this page with me right now ain't going to vote for them. I wouldn't. I I know. Most of y'all are not going to do it. The white folks ain't going to do it. The white women aren't going to do it. The immigrants aren't going to do it. You see what I'm saying? Look, no matter how much they try to, to, it's not going to happen. Now, he might be... we not. It's not. It, people are not playing those identity politics. And just because you black don't mean you black like me. Yeah, Keisha. You know what I mean, we bro. saw. We don't like Barack Obama no more. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's another thing, folk don't understand. We don't really like to do. Go ahead, Cody. Well, same thing that's going on in this in the state of Louisiana with uh, Jeff Landry, since mm-hmm. he's now the uh, Republican governor. You know, and this state is completely red. Um, however, um, what I want to say that there com- a lot of Democrats, the, the, even the, the politicians, even the identity politics are complaining that the Democrats are getting beaten by the Democrat, by the, uh, by the Republican due yeah, to the man. fact that, that, that people are voting their interest in this, in this swing the other way. Yeah, they got it. They got it. Look, they have a, um, there was a special on MSNBC that basically said uh, they, they're trying to figure out why black men aren't voting for the Democrats anymore. And y'all know, because y'all been on here on the internet, we've been talking for a couple of years now. And we have some conclusions, yeah. But so anyway, we, go ahead, go ahead, Glow. When we talk about, when we talk about like democracy, which is the rule of majority in uh, mm-hmm. conservatism or republic, uh, the republic, which is like uh, representation through for the for the small minority, we're working our we're mm-hmm. working against our best interests because, like statistically, we will not ever be the majority in this country. So it's like if you're voting Democrat in the first place, you're voting for the majority. You're really voting. You're not voting in your best interest because the majority is white people, and then. Look, like look, for us to be the yeah, minority, yeah, yeah, yeah. For us to be the yeah, minority, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As 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 American citizens, we benefit from certain policies just by being American citizens. 
You see what I mean? So it's not really in that particular situation. It's not about white. It's not about Asian. It's not about Hispanic. If you benefit from migrants being pushed back to their country, I mean, because you're an American citizen and make sure that the job base is not uh, or the, the competition for employment isn't as stiff. We don't have such a strain on our resources. So just all I'm saying is vote your interest in that regard. You see what I mean? I see. Vote I see. Your interest. You, you know, man, I don't want to get racism is going to always exist. It's just like the air. It's always going to be here. You're not going to get over it. It's worse in some places than others. But you still can't let that be a cop out. That's my thing. Like, I don't tell people, oh, let's get rid of racism. I'm like, no, it's it's a condition. You're like a hurricane. You deal with it. Sometimes it's harsher than others. You got to deal with it. But, you know, at the end of the day, I've been I've been living down south most of my life now, whether it's Texas or Louisiana. And that's um, according to the rest of America. It's, it's a horrible place to be. Right. They, they, they must be so right. But I'm, I do well down here because I recognize the fact that, hey, racism exists. It's going to happen. But what you don't what you would never find Uncle D doing is if I became the, the president of the local uh, 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 <laughs> county commissioner's office, I'm just going to pick out all the richest white people in the county and say, I'm going to overtax all of y'all. You see what I'm saying? And they go, I can't believe this. You see what I'm saying? This yeah. is more who you think it is. That's just stupid. And why would you do that to yourself? Just stupid, man. Anyway, my man, Robert Campbell, looking for looking for a get back for one of those lovely ladies turn attack dog in HR <laughs> at Blank Ella. Yeah, the lovely ladies are catching hell, man. I need one more cash app, super chat. I'm about to get up out of here, though, man. You guys, man, I appreciate y'all. I've talked a long time. I think we got the point across. I think the main lessons that we should learn, first of all, be professional in your professional settings. That's the first thing. All this could have been – all this started because these two individuals – decided they wanted to mess around. That's the first thing. And then they messed around, got exposed, and they were vulnerable because they got all these enemies now. You making enemies and you your house ain't clean and you trying to prosecute somebody else for their house being dirty. That's basically what happened. And, uh, you know, it's biblical, man. You know, that, like they said, the grave you dig for me, you better dig one right next to it because you're going to be laying next to me. You see what I'm saying? Don't throw don't don't throw rocks at a glass house. All these old sayings come to, you know, and, and and if you unethical or if you're the type of person that can't you raise in a society where you could do no wrong, like our lovely ladies, you at some point you're gonna run up against a brick wall, and that's what this woman has done. But anyway, my man Glow Hearted, big shout out to my, the guy in the black suit. I appreciate y'all, man. Finally, I got to 10. That's awesome. Thank you so much, brother. Lessons. We're taught and learned tonight. Excellent show. Um, thank you so much, fam. I appreciate you. But uh, I'm tired, you guys. Remember what I said earlier. You folks who are supposed to send me that information for your lawsuits, make sure you do it. There's some affidavits out there I need returned to my law office. There's some. Uh, I think everybody sent their contracts in. I would like to file the first one of these lawsuits next week. Okay, so we can go ahead and 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 rain this uh this uh social media platform man you don't want i don't want them out there to keep taking y'all money like that you understand that ain't right but uh and for those of you guys who don't know uh our favorite platform here when your favorite when you're uh when someone you have donated to is demonetized that money that you donate in a super chat or a super fund or whatever YouTube keeps that. They keep it for that last month. So if, let's say you donated twenty dollars, but somebody else donated fifteen. You add all that up, you got a hundred, two hundred people who donated. Somebody might have made ten thousand dollars. YouTube keeps all that in the month you were demonetized. Mm. The person, you so you intended to give it to Robert Campbell is giving me money because he wants a personal interaction with Dennis Sperling. That five dollars right there. Part of that is supposed to be for me. YouTube keeps 30%. I keep 70%. But YouTube can say, oh, well, we don't like something you said. You used too many vowels in the last five minutes of your conversation. And even though it's January 31st, we're going to demonetize you for the whole month of January. And even though we don't like it's that one thing you said on that one video, we're going to keep the money 
from all that you earn for all the other videos. You understand what I'm saying? And we're not going to tell the people who who paid for this, who paid for this, this interaction that we keeping it. When y'all click on that button, it don't tell you all that. Matter of fact, the terms of how they give it to you is hidden off somewhere and it's not accessible to the public. So it's not conspicuous. Conspicuous means it's not open for you to see in the contract because what you're doing is you're purchasing a, uh, uh, you're, you're purchasing a super chat for the purpose of interacting with a, a, um, a content creator. And if that's a contract you're forming, would you sign, if you didn't know all the terms of a contract and, and, and you signed it anyway and you agreed it, you didn't, you didn't assent to the terms of the contract. So it's not a valid contract, but they're keeping your money anyway, indefinitely. And I want y'all to get y'all money back. Everybody who donated to Fresh and Fit for the month they got, they kept that money. Same thing for everybody else. What's the white girl? I always forget the white girl name. Curly. They keep her money. That last month, they keep that money. And it's one thing for them not to pay me. It's another thing for them to keep your money. You see what I'm saying? You understand? And there's millions of y'all out there. It's thousands. So that's why this lawsuit is coming hot and heavy. I'm not going to let them keep doing that to my people. I, I protect y'all. Can I sue for multiple incidents, separate small claims court, like if some cause harm or different... You need to schedule an appointment with Uncle D. We have a conference about it. We can talk about it. You can email me at SperlingDennis at gmail.com. If you want to have a private conference, we'll, I'll be more than happy to do a consultation with you, Sperling. And y'all buy the rest of these books I got around here. Other than that, man, I love you guys. This is Uncle D. And as I always say at this time, I am out.